Hello and welcome to One Stop Co-op Shop Streamed, your one stop for co-op news and playthroughs. And today we're playing through Marvel Champions. It's Friday. What's up, Terrence? How's it going? Not Thursday. Not Thursday. Not Marvel Champion Thursday. So yeah, sorry about that for anybody who was with us last week and I said it was going to be Thursday this week. That's next week I have something on Friday. So I apologize. So probably next Thursday. I didn't even ask you yet, Terrence. Are you free next Thursday to play? Uh, yeah, I think I should be. Okay. So probably next Thursday night, even if Terrence can't do it, I'll do a, a solo stream. But tonight we're doing something interesting. We're playing Black Plan Panther and Black Widow against Claw. So we're going old school with uh, with the stream tonight. <laughs> yeah, this was, uh, I told Peter this because I was kind of, I've been playing the Marvel's Avengers video game that is not well liked, but they just released a new like War of Wakanda expansion, which is actually pretty awesome. And it has... Ulysses Claw is the main villain, and it's in Wakanda, so obviously Black Panther, right. and he's super well done, so I figured it'd be a fun kind of tie-in for those the like two people in the world that are playing that game with me. So, Terrence, here's the only negative. The only negative yeah. is you've picked two of my favorite characters, and I can't be both of them. Well, you could play two-handed if you want. Like, I could, <laughs> I could just sit here and then play the card you tell me to. Yes. Well, and the funny part is, I was like, oh, I'm going to come up with a super creative Black Panther deck, and, like, I'm going to do this and that, and, like, I want to have it so I don't have any cards, and, like, the second or third time through my deck, I'm just going through, and it's Wakanda forever, Wakanda forever, and then I be built the most, like, generic protection deck ever to play today. So, uh, all, all my hopes and dreams are, uh, <laughs> I, was, I was not as, uh, as uh, motivated as I thought I was going to be this week to come up with this, like, super crazy deck, but that's okay. It should still be fun. I mean, I haven't played Panther Protection in forever, so uh, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, I I'd be curious if like a a kind of like confused confused lock kind of style Panther with the guns because you have vibranium uh, to then be able to basically flip to get Golden City and just like mill to get Wakanda forever. That's interesting. Yeah, I actually don't think I have any double resources in that de in this deck. That's like the one crazy thing I did was because because you because you don't need like seven of them, right? Don't well, you get like four? Yeah, you get three or each four type. triples, I believe, uh, with your vibranium. So I was like, you know what? Well, they're only doubles. They're only doubles. Oh, okay. Yeah, either Captain Marwa is the triples. That's right. But either way, I, but I think it's one of one of each resource type, including wilds. Uh, so you get four of those, and then if you put in the three of kind of the basics, then you're up to like seven out of your forty cards of double resources. Yeah, I realized in the so past when I like played him, that's been cash money. Yeah, well, it's been one of the big problems, right? Because you know you have a lot of one cost cards later in the game. A lot of your expensive stuff is stuff that you put out, and so when you're late game, you're just getting like resources after resources that you just don't need. So that was one of the uh, the tweaks I made to building a deck for him. But again, I haven't played him in forever, so who knows? Might be terrible. But uh, before we get into gameplay, because we're, we're doing a lot of talk, this is usually our post-game talk, and we will do that. But we have a special announcement. I mean, I guess it's been announced, but um, what is it? Kana the Marvel? Kana of Heroes. Kana of Heroes. Kana of Heroes. Oh, okay. I, get it right, I, get it. I was about to say, I know you did Kana of the Rings. I was trying to figure out what, uh, what, it, what the Marvel one would be. Kind of heroes. Nice. So l tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so that's, uh, uh, I guess I'm a little biased because uh, I'm involved with it. Uh, it is kind of being started mostly uh, from, if you know what, the Hall of Heroes website, which is a great resource for uh, tons of stuff for Marvel Champions, including like the Mad Titan box is all spoiled on there. Um, but uh, on May 20 to 22nd of next year, uh, we have dates locked in and there's, uh, it's very similar to kind of the Condor Rings kind of format of stuff where, uh, in addition, there will be a hotel block at a nearby hotel, and that's all set up. Um, but yeah, uh, we haven't announced ticket sales yet, um, but there's a fact and dates and kind of a little bit of information. Um, and I think we're shooting for around probably similar pricing as Condor Rings. So that's around like 45 bucks for the three days uh for that weekend so this is it the that, old fantasy flight headquarters yeah geek, yeah the, i think it's called game center now with a z right uh instead of a c uh but yeah it's at the it's at the old fantasy flight uh kind of i guess uh is it, i don't know if it's their hq but what it's like across game center HQ. Or whatever. yeah it's their game center uh where they've done like tons of tournaments and 
and other things. So if you've gone to any of the like FFG, I think tournaments and stuff before, it'll be in that same area. Nice. And so there's that. So for muggles like myself who haven't been in the past, tell me a little bit about it. Like I understand that I get to go and I get to play with a bunch of people who love Marvel champions, right? Like that's the obvious benefit of it. But what else goes on there? Yeah. So, uh, um, uh, there's a little, lot of details still being worked out, uh, for all the things we're going to do. So, uh, Usually people in the community will throw events. Uh, I think we're going to focus the, I think the plan right now is we're going to focus on the box cycle uh, and ask people to bring that kind of box with them uh, for scenarios and have stuff based around that for the box that's after this Mad Titan one. Um, So whatever the next box after Mad Titan is probably the one that we'll pick and focus on. And uh, usually it'll just be events and kind of, um, at least in kind of the rings, there's just been kind of epic events where we'll try to do like a, a large scale kind of thing, uh, across the room and then have different challenges and things to kind of get things going. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's for the most part for a lot of people, like that's just to drive, uh, you know, drive people to play, uh, with some focus, but it is really just free play for those who like, you're not required to do it. Uh, and there's just a lot of like pickup and the ability to kind of meet other people. Like if you're watching the stream, I'm going to assume you're probably interested in Marvel champions. And there's just something fun about being in a room with about a hundred or so people that are also just really into it. And, uh, I mean, especially for this pandemic, right. It's, uh, that was definitely the case before the pandemic of just being able to kind of meet face to face with people that you've just been interacting with on discord, uh, or other channels kind of online. Right. And, and kind of shake their hand and and play a game with them with real cards and not over TTS. Yeah, so Victor Von Doom says, what state is the con in? And Successful Geek uh, answered correctly, Minnesota. So that's where Fantasy Flight headquarters is, and that's where that game center is. Um, Yeah, and then Victor says, oof, I'm from Virginia. That's far. Yeah, I'm in Maryland, uh, (laughs) Victor. I understand. That is, uh, it it is not an easy travel for me. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to fly in, but I know Terrence is uh, pushing hard for me to come. So I hope I can, and uh, I'm going to try to for sure. Yeah, you know, it's just, it's be fun to to meet the other content hosts too, and kind of we we haven't even played Marvel Champions in person. Uh, uh, the, at the one Gen Con event, I think uh, it was kind of demoed at, right? Yeah, it was the one event we've been in person at. Um, yeah, it wasn't out yet. So, um, we played the yeah. Mind instead. So uh, <laughs> yeah, that, it was a card game, just not this card game. <laughs> yeah, a little different. A little bit different. But yeah, it should be fun. Uh, uh, I I've the Con of the Rings has been some of my like easily my favorite kind of board game events so if if marvel champions is even half as good as what i've had at con of the rings uh i'll be super happy um it is a lot more less i I feel like gen con's a lot more about the press and and kind of buying and and kind of vendor cycle because it's such a big event yeah and con con the rings is probably more similar to some of i think like probably the other cons you go to that are much more focused on like just playing right so it's like a weekend of just playing games and kind of just being around people who just want to play games, you know? Nice. And and kind of have fun things in the evening. Nice. Um, Let's see. I saw one. uh, Josh Walton says, oh, man, I always wanted to go to Con of the Rings so bad but was never able to make it. Well, Josh, hopefully you can make it to Con of Heroes because uh, that should – it sounds like fun. I I think a weekend of Marvel Champions would be – Right up my alley, uh, certainly. Now, do you guys do any custom content while you're there, or is it mostly, you know, out of the There's box stuff? Content. There's been a lot of talk about custom content. Like I think Kenny Hawk. Uh, this is recorded, but don't hold me to it. I, I he's been talking about bringing like I, I think some custom stuff for the the existing kind of scenarios and stuff. And there's been a lot of other kind of people in the community kind of. Uh, definitely being excited about the event uh, as kind of the first actual Marvel Champions event. Uh, talking about maybe building some campaigns and stuff for it. Um, oh, cool! But, but we'll see. I mean, uh, a lot of that can come from the community too. So uh, it is very much a event for the community and not just an event run by the three of us who are organizing it, right? So, um, yeah, we're there, it's been fun. We've been talking about uh, we're trying to get a logo and stuff together for it and talking about swag and, and kind of all that stuff too nice nice well i'm looking forward to going to anything i will be at origins this year so if anybody's going to be there hit me up uh, i will 
hopefully get to play some Marvel Champions while I'm there. I am playing. I am bringing Jerry though, so who knows? Like, <laughs> Jerry, Jerry will probably want to do some RPGing at some point, so I'll probably get my Marvel Champions in. He's not a huge fan of Champions, but uh, hopefully, hopefully, I'll get some Champions in while I'm there. And uh, the only other thing I wanted to announce is I did a couple videos today for the first two heroes from uh, Mad Titan Shadow. I almost said Galaxy's Most Wanted. I don't know. <laughs> I'm living in the past still. Um, but it was funny. You said whatever the next cycle is by the time Con of the Ring or Con of the Heroes comes, that might be uh, <laughs> Mad Titan Shadow based on all the announcements we've yeah, had lately. Yeah, I, I hope not. Uh, yeah, so I, I think it's whatever's after is what we're looking at, even if there's another box. I think that's what we're planning for. Yeah. Um, well, hopefully it comes yeah. out before then, right, with all the shipping issues and everything else. And that will definitely be part of our post-stream discussion today is talking about that. But it has come out in the UK. Uh, I know a lot of people in our Discord have ordered it from overseas from the UK and uh, talking about getting it next week and, and digging into the box itself. But if you want to see what the first two scenarios and the first two heroes look like, I did a video on that. We're not going to do any more content until it does get more wide distribution, but I did want to get those out there just so you all can see what those heroes and scenarios look like. Yeah, I was kind of surprised even with the spoil. Like There just has not been a lot of recorded content on it at all um so well that's the benefit of tts we can get it out a little bit early uh not not many people have it right i don't know that there are many like european uk people doing content on marvel champions content creators in marvel yeah so yeah. you see a lot of them here in the u.s um and in canada which you know it hasn't arrived here yet so that's that's the negative um but Anyway, if you want to check that out, we have it not only here on the One Stop Co-op Shop stream channel, but also on the non-stream channel as well is the first video in that series. So I'll link those I mean, later they, on. They let, you, they let you invade the other the other channel? They did. I tell you what. Marvel, they're, Marvel watch out. I'm taking over. <laughs> uh, so Victor Von Doom says, watch those videos and enjoy them, Peter. Glad to get a taste of the expansion. Yeah, I'm super excited by it. I'll, I'll be honest. And we'll talk about it after. Here you go. And, and we'll give a big, maybe we'll do a big spoiler section. So we'll do all our after talk. And then maybe we'll do a little bit of spoiler talk about what's coming up in that campaign and stuff like that. But we'll do that all at the end. But for now, they didn't come here to see us talk the whole time. They came here to see us play. So let's get into some Marvel Champions. Yeah. They actually just want a podcast from us, Peter. I mean, so. uh, they already had a podcast from us not far ago. All right, let me see. All right, here's the thing. Not only did I not get a chance to, like, build this deck exactly the way I wanted, but I didn't. Get, I haven't played this deck at all. So uh, it's been a while since I played some Black Panther. So let me see. Uh, search your deck for a Black Panther upgrade and add it to your hand. But that's after I do all my discarding stuff like that. Hey, I got two Wakanda Forevers. Guess what's getting discarded? Turn one. Uh, hard to ignore. Definitely keeping that. I do have some vibranium, uh, nerves of steel. I should probably keep that. An armored vest. Oh, man. It's a pretty good turn one. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to pay for everything is the problem. Well, yeah. Are you gonna put your upgrade out? Like, are you going upgrade or are you just going defense? I may pull I the crappy gonna... upgrade out, of, like a crappy upgrade out, and, like, just spend it, right? And not go Wakanda forever on this first turn. Uh, so let's see. I got my daggers, which are one damage to the villain, and each enemy engaged with the player. So I'm kind of responsible for threat here, uh, a little bit at least. Anyway, I know you can help. You're a two-two, also. Um, yeah. Uh, unlike Peter, I did test my deck uh, at least a little bit uh, a few times. Then got like three or four games in, uh, and yeah, I did spend most of my time fourteen. Uh, okay. So here's what I might do. Wait, do I have to get a tech upgrade with this? Uh, no, Black, just any upgrade, Black right? Panther upgrade, so it does have to yeah, be. Yeah, it has to be Black I don't want to do the one where I heal myself. That's the one I want to kind of hold on. That That's like an important one for this deck. So maybe I'll do the two slash... Wait, are you doing like fighting fit Black Panther? I forget. I mean, honestly, like you're... you're I put as many upgrades in this deck as possible. That That's really the major... Uh, this is this is the thin the thin the deck. This out, is so a thin the deck, but and try to get Wakanda Forevers. Did you, did you do the honorary Avenger thing too? I didn't. <laughs> I did. Uh, come on now, you, you're expecting too much of me. You really, really are expecting too much of me. All right, so I'm gonna put Nerves of Steel out. I'm gonna put. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I just expect you to listen to uh, to the brand. <laughs> I'm gonna put Armored Vest out. 
I'm going to put hard to ignore out. Which one am I? I'm going to pay for it with the claws, I think. Uh, well, no. Actually, energy daggers are worse than claws, I think. I don't need to do one to everybody. Although, two to everybody is pretty nice. But anyway, uh, there's a hard to ignore. I'm going to hold on to my uh, stuff. I'm going to flip over. And are we going to get rid of this? Or should I get rid of my dude? Uh, I have maybe answers. I mean, I do have retaliate, so this guy will just do two damage to me and die eventually. I mean, there is that. Yeah. So let me go ahead and thwart this. Unless you don't, unless you want me to work on this one. Do you think you can get rid of a mortal claw? Uh, I don't think I, I definitely can't thwart for four. Okay. Well, then I'll get rid of two on this one. And we'll just let this uh, weapons runner kill themselves over time. All right, okay. why don't you go ahead and go? All right, so oh, I think... look at you with all your double resources on turn one. Yeah, well, you know, I put them in my deck. Uh, get that. Oh, Ooh, acrobatic. Back is always so nice. What was that? So nice. It's so nice. What, grappling hook, tough. acrobatics? Um, all, yeah, those are all some of my favorite cards. All right, so I'm going to flip... Um, do you think it's worth playing Angela? Pull out a, vin a minion? Now, which Great. side scheme did we do? Because we didn't even tell them tell them that. <laughs> I did Anachronauts, uh, which is a little harder than the Temporal that I was deck testing against. Um, so I think the, the minions are a little beefier, but um, I do have the uh, Relentless Assault in my hand with the strength. Go for it. Let's see what we get. So we get a search actually to top 10, which is a little nicer. Right. Yeah, you're not just stuck with 10. All right. So let's see. Top 10. So we got Wild Run. Interesting. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, wait. Nine. Are you pulling them out? Ten. Yeah. Uh, well, we get a pick out of these. Well, right. Four. Okay. These are the 10, the 10, and we get a pick one. I mean, Armored Guard, right? Oh, oh no. Toughness is the problem with Armored Guard. Well, you have a five damage attack. Is it have overkill? You know, I don't know if I've ever played against this side scheme. Now that I'm looking at these cards, none of them look familiar to me. It kind of sucks as I basically just lose Angela if uh, Apocryphus comes out, right? Why is that? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, get, do Wild Run. Ooh, baby, baby, it's a wild run. If I if I get him, I just I also lose. I could potentially lose Relance Assault, right? Okay. I feel like it's all bad, right? I mean, how about? Because that guy has toughness. Death Hunt has toughness, also. By the way. Yeah. Your call, man. You think I go wild run and win? I think we could go wild run. Because you're going to have the um, hand cannon, worst case scenario. We don't have to get rid of defense network this turn, right? It's not the worst thing in the world. All right. And it'll be nice to have this come out. When we know when it's we coming out, right? Yeah, when we get a deal with it. I got it. it. You, you, then... you deal with your cool. stuff. All right. So one card. What is it? Hand cannon. Cool. All right. Not too bad. All right, so I'm going to spend that strength to do Relentless Assault on uh, Wild Run. So that's five. Unfortunately, I don't get the overkill, but that's okay. Wait, you got a Acrobatics up here too still? Yeah, and this just goes in my hand. I think I'm going to hold that because that's actually a pretty good card. Right. So, yes, it is. Uh, Very good. And then a Angela is going to kill your minion, right? For two? Sure. I'm not going to complain about that. And then I'll get rid of uh, Defense Network. Maybe we should have actually just worked on Claw, because Defense Network's not horrible right now in front of us, but whatever. We'll work on Claw next turn. All right, and I think that's it for me. Nice. All right, so Victor Von Doom said he just ordered Mad Titans uh, from the UK store. Sneaky, sneaky. Wasteland Sniper said, I'm so tempted to do that. So, uh, see, there you go. We're, we're still getting sales <laughs> for... Uh... Yeah, I saw some people in Europe complaining about all the Americans that are ordering stuff from them. I mean, I'm sure their stores aren't angry about it. So yeah. Ooh, I got vibranium suit. I got uh, vibranium, and I got a Wakanda forever. 
I do have desperate defense also. When your hero defends against the attack, he gets plus two. You take no damage. Ready your hero. Sweet. I will probably be doing that, right? <laughs> now, wait. Yep. Yeah. Why do I always think Claw's the one that makes you put, like, a million cards in front of you? It's not. That's Goblin. No, Claw's the double double boost. Double boosted attack. Which is which is why Attacker Badass is so good against Claw. Yeah, well, unfortunately you don't have that, so I'm desperate defensing. Oops. I, and defending against this, so I block for four. Come on, nothing. No, isn't it five? Because you have plus one. Oh, you're right. And I might need it because that's a double and that's single. All right, so I only needed four anyway. What I meant was he's only going to attack for four. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I blocked for five, so that lets me ready. It lets me hard do that. Oh, so that was the reason, because I wouldn't have been able to hard to ignore. Uh, yeah, with that. and then you also get. Although, to, is this uh, a thwart? This is not a thwart. So would it go past, um, hazard or no? No, I don't think so. I think because you can't. Didn't didn't we read the thing? It's like you can't remove. Yeah, I think it is. It's not you can't thwart. It's you can't remove. I think the thing is you can like get past patrol right it's good patrol is like a thwart like an enemy with patrol but you can't get past uh, a hazard crisis. so it's good that we got rid of the hazard yeah. then yeah, um, hazard. Yep. yeah and i uh did one to him because i have retaliate one boom watch me now how you like me all right go for yeah. it okay uh should i defend here i mean you brought angel in for that I assume you're flipping here one of these days. Did I bring Angela for what? Well, she has one more health, so I might just chump her next. That's time. what I'm saying. You don't. You don't need her this turn. Excuse me. You block one. Oh, you're defending though. Nice. Yeah, that's not the same. Just because I don't necessarily want to like go down. Uh, that much. She only has nine health, so. Yeah. That's three. two and three. Yeah. Wow. Four. All right. Well, I'm happy I defended. So that is six damage minus your two defense is four. Nice. All right. So I, that's not nice. Uh, Where's my attack acrobatics? That's what I get for discarding a card. That's just what happened. Right. Right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because you had the choice of what one to do, and you chose the one that lets you made you discard a card, so you couldn't pay for acrobatics. All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, draw our cards. See what else terrible is going to happen. Ooh, there we go. Nice three per player. So that's up to six. Uh, the Anachronauts, when defeated, shuffle each temporal card in the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. That doesn't sound good. I think I might chump this. Second attack. Do you want me to block for you? That's the other option. Although then well, I don't we need a thwart? I'd rather have a thwart than your two damage, but I also, yeah, I don't know. So you're chumping it? Yeah. All right. What's this? This activation deals damage to you, exhaust your hero. Well, it did not. So three damage all taken by your ally, Angela, over there. Thank you, Angela. Would have preferred it on that first attack. First well, attack, yeah, but... I'm sure you would have. <laughs> no question about that. Uh, let's see. Wasteland, or Victor Von Doom said, Zatu Games, shipping wasn't outrageous. Was 15 pounds shipping and game cost 31 pounds. Josh uh, Walton says, does Angela reveal the minion? Wait, what? Oh, uh, no, it puts into play, actually. So you wouldn't have lost that card, so you want to put acrobatics in? Yeah. And draw one more? Well, yeah, it's probably hard to... That, I mean, that's the only thing it would have done different, right? Because you would have definitely put acrobatics in. Yeah. I mean, do I retcon the, like, three damage? Yeah, go for it if you want. I mean, you would have done it, right? Let's see. Did I have enough? You did have enough because you would have had one more card in your hand. You would have had the hand cannon, yeah. which you yeah. would have used to okay. pay for acrobatics. So thanks for pointing that out. With that being said, you probably should have brought out the other one. We're not retconning it that far. The one that had four health, so no. you could have overkilled it, right? Yeah, that's fine now. Uh, and then we do uh, one... Did you, did, you, did, you, did you shuffle them back in? I don't know. Yes, I did. Yes, for sure. So, by the way, you do one more damage because of your um, Black Widow, Widow pr trigger in preparation. Widowmaker. 
So it should be down one for my retaliate and four for you. Let's make sure we got that right. Do, 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 do. Yep. I don't know. Uh, the one revealed the shuffle back in. Wait, what? This. Uh, from the Macronauts? The sides. Oh, no, that's one's defeated. One's defeated, man. Come on now. Nice. You're all jumping ahead. We're not even close to defeating right. that darn thing. All right. You good? Yeah, Your first play? feels much better now. I mean, I would have potentially kept Angela around, but it's fine. It is fine. All right. You know, that's uh, that's our penalty for not paying attention. Yeah. So you're using skill? I can't skill strike, so... Putting crew quarters in? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, at the HP I'm at. Oh, I'm guessing at 8, but... Can you, that, that plus safe house makes flipping down super nice. Well, yes. The question is, what do you do with Winter Soldier? You gonna use him to pay for something? I mean, I guess so. Like, I'm not even close, right? I mean, you're one away, but <laughs> you gonna put hand and cannon in? I mean, you're certainly not doing follow through. So the other option is to hold on to crew quarters and pay those other three to put soldier in. Well, if I put follow through, it's just out of my deck uh, forever, right? Do I have another hand cannon in my deck? Or did I already discard it? Not already discard it. Yeah, I guess I just put hand cannon in. All right, go for it, man. How many charges does it get? Three? Three. All right, so that's it, right? Which one yeah. do you want me to start working on? Immortal or uh, an Acronauts? Acronauts. I mean, cards are always worse. All right. So too often Acronauts it is. And then... I'm going to pay two for my... <sighs> this is a tough thing here. So do I Wakanda forever and just do four damage? I mean, I can't do this, right? So, so let, let's talk about this. Because I'm, I've always had this question, and I think I can't do it. It says, move one damage from your hero to an enemy. Two damage instead. So if you're full health, you can't do that, right? No, because you have no damage to move. Okay, so I'm just going to pay this to Wakanda forever. Wow, really? And do you, I guess you could sure it back. Yeah, so I'm going to do four. And that's going to be it. Let's ready up. I mean, honestly, I'm just trying to get as much stuff out of my hand as possible. First time through, holding on to cards is no way to do that. You know what I mean? That's the problem. I, I just don't want to hold cards if I can help it. Oh, I got Fighting Fit, which would be nice. I got another hard to ignore. I got my Unflappable. Uh, yeah. Do you want me to defend for you and then potentially stun with Never Back Down? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, so we got to do threat first, right? Yep. So three. Yep. All right. And then I'll defend for you. Never back down. So that's five defense. Come on, low numbers. That's a good low number. I don't think they can do anything. Yep. All right. So I block all of it. Stun him. Uh, so then he tries to attack me, gets rid of the stun, and go ahead and draw your two cards. I only get one card, right? Oh, no. I get two. Macronauts, man. Why are you drawing mine? So I think, doesn't it go one, two, three? I don't know. Does it really matter? <laughs> I, I've always done it. The first player draws two. Uh, did you do you also like the Snackronauts? What are out? you doing to us, Terrence? Is it literally the same thing? Yeah. Why? What? What did you? What? <laughs> what did you give us? Oh, by the way, he takes one damage also from my retaliate. Yeah. What kind of crazy? Oh. I should have hard to ignore it also to take one of those thread off. <laughs> uh, drink, everybody finish your drink. Oh my. Oh my. Yep. Man, man, I shouldn't have switched those cards. Oh, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Grappling hook, dude. Grappling hook. I can't own grappling hook if it's my card. What? No. Really? When you reveal a treasury. What? Is that true? It says you. You, you. you can read the English. I'm just trying to get out of this, man. Man. Wow. That's another card draw, by the way. 
with six on it. <laughs> I mean, we got three card draws with six on it. Yeah, why did you switch those cards? We've always done it that the first player draws two. I'm blaming that one on you, Terrence. That's all your fault. Do you, do you want me to... No. Do you want to retcon no, that? No, 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 no. It's... Honestly, it it's, should not matter. It's like uh, being at a blackjack table and somebody hitting when they shouldn't. It doesn't matter, right? Bottom line is, it would have been the same thing either way. It just sucks right now because, uh, yeah, that's no bueno to have Killmonger yeah, well, sitting. In- you're first player. Make, make the magic happen. Make it rain. I mean, I can fighting fit and just kill him. But then I have to get rid of unflappable or one of the hard to ignores with, like, ridiculous amounts of acceleration and everything else in front of us but well there's only there's only not ridiculous now there's only normal acceleration uh and a lot of uh hazard i think that's the thing though right i fighting fit to kill killmonger uh sure i mean i also had a relentless assault too well you need something for yours right or and then i i think i put in unflappables way better than a hard to ignore um drawing a card and then i won't have to make such hard decisions later (laughs) all right that's it for me go for it terrence all right um i don't think we want more minions no uh so looking for trouble improper relentless assault pays for uh spider girl spider girl spider girl and I think I just put out its acrobatics. I mean, acrobatics is always good. So this one is stunned and confused, uh, which means you don't have to kill it except if you want to. Yeah, so what should I do with Spider Girl? Just hold her? Maybe. Just attack Claw? I mean, well, you can't attack Claw. You have a guard. You can get rid of the tough. Yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, you could theoretically sucks. hand cannon and overkill. But man, we yeah, gotta start I, I worrying feel like about I these. Just wanna, I, just, I feel like I'm gonna port here. I mean, I, yeah, for two. I, I I agree with you. You're gonna take it off the same one we already started. Yeah, I mean that way you can at least clear it, or I can clear it, depending yes, on what's happening here. Absolutely. So with that, Spider Girl, I, I assume I'm gonna chomp with her. So Spider Girl is just gonna take the Get tough off. The tough. I think. I, I, I think that's the right call. Now we don't have to kill him, except for he's in your way. But I mean, you should be thwarting anyway right now. With this, I mean, normally I would say not so much, but we have no justice and ridiculous stuff in front of us. So uh, yeah, I, I do have faithful downs and stuff in my deck. I just haven't drawn them. So. Uh, Brother Voodoo's interesting. Energy barriers interesting, but I do have tactical genius, which seems important right now. A Wakanda forever and a golden temple. Uh, or Golden City. Oh, this is tough. Golden City, so good. It's so good, but ah, uh, I almost feel like I do tactical I, I, genius. I mean, in you, you need forever. tactical genius, though, right? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I feel like it's tactical genius. Wakanda Forever is the play this turn. As sad as that is, um, I mean, two two Thor plus your two Thor, that'd be like four. I mean, it's something, right? Well, I mean, I guess you'd have to be ready though. So, uh, and I, yeah, I have no way to get ready is the problem and i'm only blocking for three so the odds of me blocking all of it are not necessarily great here either uh maybe i have a acrobatics oh you do have an acrobatics nice okay all right but let's put three on this and we're getting about 27 cards here also let's not let's not forget that part of the equation yeah i do have the grappling hooks i could i could maybe cancel one of mine yeah nice thanks thanks why don't you cancel Shadows of the Past if that comes up? Oh, wait a minute. It already came up on my turn. <laughs> well, he didn't last very long for what that's worth. I mean, sure, but I didn't get to do all the stuff I wanted to. I had to go out of my way. Uh, so I added the three there already. Uh, we're not to 12 yet, but let's go ahead and have him attack. Now, this is interesting. I could... Oh, no, I can't block yours. Anyway, all right. So I should block myself, right? Defend myself. Yeah. Or do you want me to defend you so it's double retaliate? I mean, it's an extra retaliate. Why is it double retaliate? Because I'll retaliate on mine and then retaliate on yours as well. But don't you? Oh, like you don't defend? No, it's fine. I need to chomp with Spider Girl. Well, I mean, the other option is I put Golden City out 
and then flip this turn and don't Wakanda forever. How about that? That's probably, that's maybe okay. So then I can, I mean, I don't really need to heal is the problem, right? Yeah. So are you going to chump with Spider-Girl? Is that what you want to do? Or you want me to flip down next turn and then you could chump with Spider-Girl next turn? I can chump Spider-Girl on your turn. Uh, do you want to be standing? I guess it doesn't matter who's standing. Steven Johnson says his play group also ordered from Zatu Games. Apparently, Zatu Games is going to be uh, the most popular Marvel Champions place in the world. Yeah, I just, I just wonder how many like how many copies they've sold overseas at this point. Oh yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure a ton. Uh, I can chomp with Spider Girl. Do you want me not to? Well, that's the question. I'm going to defend whether I defend myself or defend you is the question. If I defend you, then I am going to flip and Golden City. If I defend me... Just defend you. Okay. All right. I'll defend me. I mean, I need to defend to trigger this stuff, right? This stuff is all... Oh! Oh! I might be able to do Golden City and Tactical Genius, but not Wakanda Forever because of my Unflappable. We'll see how this ends up turning out. Um, all right. So I'm going to double boost against myself. So I'm only defending right, reveal one for time. three. Give this enemy Give a tough, tough status card and another boost card. Well, he's okay. about to lose it anyway, so that, that does not matter. Zero. Nothing. Seems good. One. Okay. Well, you don't need to, so I defended all of it. So let's do these two things. Let me draw a card, and let's take one off the main scheme. I got Fury, which is totally not useful. <laughs> I mean, the only benefit if of Fury... If only you had more double resources in your hand. What was that? You had more double resources in your hand. So... What I could actually do is I could Golden City, flip, draw two cards, and get Fury out. <laughs> uh, I feel like Tactical Genius is actually... No, but that leaves good. me Tactical Genius and Energy Barrier in my hand, right? And then I draw three more cards, or I draw two cards. Maybe I get a double resource. Get to keep Tactical Genius. We'll see. We'll see. All right, so he's attacking you. You're chumping? So... I'm thinking about this. I have two moments of triumphs in my hand. So you think I just take this hit? Sure. Just gonna take it. And hold it for a rainy day. All right. Uh, exhaust the character you control, give the enemy another boost card. Man, these and uh, these anachronauts are annoying as crap, by the way. I, I, I yeah. would just like to- I do, I do have two target acquired to my- Deck. All, right. All right, so, so that's, that's one. Two. I assume you're not getting rid of that. So that's two total boost yeah. right now. Another one. Three. So three total. Yeah. All right, and then this one, stun goes away. And that's that. Yep. Uh, now we get to draw. So I draw three cards. One, two, three. You draw two cards. Right? Is That's how it works, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry, I'm not used to having all of these in the stupid play. Oh, quick strike. Nice. Why not? So you do take two from that, but they take one? Yep. There's one down. Plenty to go. Ritual combat. My nemesis. Discard the top card of the encounter deck. Then choose to either deal X damage to your hero or place X threat on the main scheme. X is one more than the number of boost icons. Well, that's lovely. Of course. I'm going to take four damage, man. Uh, Wait, is it plus one? It's plus one. It's plus one. Nice. One more than the number of boost icons. It's, I mean, that's just... That just is. Oh, Surge. That's pretty great. I mean, yep. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. I might die here. Uh, the villain attacks you. Do you need me to defend for you? I don't know. Or do you want me What are the odds? Or... I mean, the odds are pretty good that I die here, right? Well, I do have attack acrobatics. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll just take it then, and I'll flip. Okay, that's zero. That's good. And that's zero. Take one damage. Give this enemy another boost card. 
Man, these temporal cards. What? Why did you put this in? What were you thinking? Or Necronauts. <laughs> All right, that's two. Uh, do you want me to do it? I mean, what am I going to be down? I mean, yeah. I, I feel like that's the right call. Down to two. Down to two. All right, so do two damage to Claw. And what do I want to do? If it's going to be maker, three, here? right? Actually, two. four. Two for well, the boost icons. Well, we can decide where Widowmaker goes, right? Oh, okay. So this could be strategic, right? Got it. And I, um, I already think I took some of the damage off. Uh, I can't remember how much, though. If anybody remembers what he was before I just took some damage off. I think he was 34. He, he does get a retaliate. So I took two off. There's the retaliate. So you get to decide where Widowmaker goes. Where do you want him to go? Where do you want him to go? I mean... Uh, Brent says, we just fought Claw as well. Hulk, Wasp, and Groot. Nice. Although you probably didn't have an Akronauts in because Terrence tries to kill us every week. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Where do you want the one? I, I guess Weapons Runner, so he just kills himself next turn. Well, he might not kill himself because he might not attack me. Uh, are you going to overkill with the hand cannon? Then I can't thwart. But that might be what I have to do, right? Yeah, so I would say put it on whatever you want to overkill, right? Should I put it on Terminatrix? I mean, I'm not, I wouldn't be sad if you killed Terminatrix. So my attack right now would be four with. Right. So you could exactly kill cannon. him now, but no overkill. Um, now you do have. I mean, that would only heal you two for Moment of Triumph. So you'd be healing two extra. If you put another damage on him, or you'd be healing too, if you put damage on him and you attack him. But that's up to you, man. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Because there's a chance I will also trigger grappling hook. All right, well, there's there is a good chance. We know we don't have to worry about shadows. Okay. What's this do? Retaliate one. Oh, lovely. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, come on. Well, all right. So I get the flip. Yay. So you're getting rid of claws, I guess, right? Um, exhaust, remove a fair estate from the game, choose to discard a Black Panther, upgrade you control. You have to, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't have a choice. Wait, is that... Can I... That's not treasure, right? Yeah. Nope. All right. <laughs> this is, uh... This has been, been interesting. I mean, I guess I didn't have to flip. I could have stayed up. But there's no point in being. Yeah, drunk. but now you can play Golden City and then draw. Oh, two I'm cards, certainly right? playing Golden City and drawing two cards. There's no question about that. Okay, so what do I do here then? Do I do I not heal and do I just play Dance of Death? Which one's Dance of Death? Dance of Death. Dance of Death is pretty good. That would let you do one here, two there, um... and then three there. That seems good, right? One, two, three to play Dance of Death. Yeah, I mean, one, two, three, right? And that way, when you overkill, you really overkill and you can heal more. Because you can't do anything to anybody else with guard. Yeah. I mean, the only other option Absolutely. is if you'd rather thwart, then... Um, I mean, it doesn't matter, are right? You gonna, are you, are you going to be able to thwart? I'm going to have Fury Are you going to be able to... You're going to be able to do two I'm going to do two, right? so I'm going to get rid of this one. Okay. Uh, so, so I think I do that, and then I overkill your minion, right? I think so, yes. Okay. So that seems good, because that clears the table. That's That feels super Black Widow-like right there. I mean, I love Black Widow. You know that. She is my, uh, she's my jam. All right. And then that, she has what? two so i get two health on that you get you heal two and that's two overkill that goes to past uh the retaliate yeah retaliate doesn't trigger on that that feels pretty good it feels great man now what doesn't feel great is my turn i think i'm getting rid of brother voodoo i i just don't see him coming out this turn and probably wakanda forever unless you think i'm gonna flip and Wakanda forever I, to to Tactical Genius, then I get rid of Energy Barrier? Yeah, I think you dish Energy Barrier and see what you get with Golden City, right? All right. Yep. So let's ready that to draw two. 
Uh, well, fighting fit ain't happening. No. I mean, the question is, do I get rid of Tactical Genius to get Fury out? And I think the answer is yes, right? Or, or I pay Wakanda Forever and Fighting Fit to get Tactical Genius out, flip, and then I Wakanda Forever to take two off, which would clear this. It's one less card we'd get. Oh, no, but Fury can clear that either way. Yeah, I think I'm just... I mean, I'm almost through my deck, right? I'm just going to... Maybe I get Shuri or something else. Who knows? All right, I'm just paying all this for Fury. Drunk. This this feels like the, the, the way that you did not play Black Panther uh, in the core set. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> like I sacrifice mean... Sacrifice every single Black Panther upgrade. <sighs> I mean, this you, is... you have less Black Panther upgrades out than I think I did when I played my leadership ally upgrade. Hey, relax, buddy. Just relax. Uh, I mean, fighting bets going to pay for something, right? Right. The question is, do I want Night Nurse or Electrostatic Armor? I think I keep Electrostatic Armor now, or put that one in now and hold on to Night Nurse. Right. I don't need her quite yet. Sure. So, are you staying unflipped? Is that your plan? I was planning on flipping. Okay. Um, and then defending this turn, and then flipping back down next. Well, you can jump with you can jump with Fury. Well, right, exactly. Um, and then I could block for you also potentially. Well, I have Spider Girls still. Sure, but I mean, if I get a protection card, I want to block right to get all this stuff to trigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Fury potentially could block for me or something. Sure. Uh, so I think I just put all this stuff out. I flip. Oh, by the way, we got to shuffle all that bad crap into the deck. Yeah. Uh, bad crap. All those terrible boost effects. Gosh. And draw another boost card. And draw another boost card. Thanks for that. Thanks, COVID. <laughs> We're just going to blame COVID for that one. Ah, oh, this is... Uh, card one. This is this is a good modular set, I will say. I mean, it's like, a it is, it's a tough it is, modular it is, set. It's making claw no joke for sure. I'm glad I didn't deck test on this one. Would have been very sad. <laughs> All right. Well, at least the at least the anachronaut side scheme is not anachronaut or uh, temporal uh, traded because that would be a big <laughs> bad cycle. Uh, so Steven Johnson said he they was at 36 health. So I think I did it right. Let me know if I did that wrong, but I think that was right. Although I thought I was down to 32 afterwards. Yeah, so I think you... I, I did take off work. all four. Uh, and then I took off more. So I got to add two health. So if he was... Wait, 36 to 32? Yeah, I went from 36 Mine to... Mine and your retaliate did one, right? Right, right. But then I took off my retaliate again. Um, so I did two extra because I did yours and my retaliate and then I did my retaliate again and then you did your damage to something else. Wait, it, it's, it was three, right? Two for attack or right. one for your retaliate. But here's the thing. So 36 I took off four three. and we said I took off two. Then I still did my retaliate after that to put a fifth one on. And then Wait, but thir 36 minus three is 33. Correct. And you had it at 32. Correct. Trust me. I got it. It's right. <laughs> I took off four instead of taking off two. And then the rest of it, we did exactly right. Right, but but we should have taken off three. But I took off an extra one. That's my point. I'm telling okay. you, when you... I thought you I thought you were one short and not two short. I was two short. Because I did my retaliate and your thing. And then we said I didn't do either of those. So I'd taken off... No, but you did retaliate because you defended. I understand. Trust me, I did it right. Yeah. I took off retaliate a second time. <laughs> okay. So, it's fine. I am I am positive because I know I went down to thirty two. If he was at thirty six to start with, we're good. All right. I never use anachronauts, and I'm thinking I would continue to be true. Says Walter Johnson or jo uh, Josh Walton. Sorry. Uh, no, Cree militants though says Brant. Um, that's what they did in their game. Uh, Victor Von Doom said same wasteland looks like i can't do it on the website so i'll email tomorrow oh i think victor von doom's talking about uh ca oh canceling buying mts yeah, they're talking about canceling their pre-order for masma day uh their direct uh claw with anachronauts is brutal yes so far it has been 
It should be at 31, says uh, ID Jester. All right, got it right. Cool. Uh, I've heard for the other packs that maybe they're in a different container and that Nebula is still slated. Oh. 917. Interesting. Uh, thank you, ID uh, Jester. I don't, I don't know how way. true that is, but uh, I've heard that it, it may be coming in September. Unknown. Who knows? Interesting. But Interesting. Um, would that be the first time you, I mean, you're more of an LCG guy than me and this should all be saved for the end, but, um, would that be the first time that they've released a pack, pack before they released the, um, main expansion? Oh, I, uh, for that wave? that's, yeah. I mean, I mean, the other games are much more, I, I feel like they would have held it, you know, if you're, if you're Arkham, like. You're not going to release pack one. Oh, before, yeah, no. Arkham doesn't make any life. sense because that's story. Even for Lord of the Rings, that's true too, right? Because like, like it. Oh, the story goes in order? It, well, it's not even only the story. Like usually the AP requires cards from that box. Ah, uh, got to it. To play the quest. So you can't even play the quest without the box. Got it. All right. So Wasteland Sniper says, I'm wondering how the delay in the US for MTS is going to affect the stuff after it yeah that was uh, the oh thing. that's I what was you were talking about to. uh nebula is still listed as 917 yeah it'll be interesting i guess because it's a bigger box it probably needs its own container and maybe that's where the issue is coming in but we'll talk about all that afterward trust me we'll the the, the post uh discussion will be very interesting this week because we did get a lot of news this week so i do want to cover that at the end uh all right but let's go ahead and ready up and draw up yep um cool so thorpe or advance rather oh my gosh that's that's this is how much i didn't pay attention when i was building my deck <laughs> i'm pretty sure i told you i was playing black you widow. definitely told me you were playing black widow and i just did not care i put her in anyway you're like i i i just want i want all the i i want it i want it i want black widow black you, you know me i want it Mine. I, I i wanted it i wasn't i wasn't gonna back down on that one <laughs> so i put her in it's uh, fine well, well you do have never back down your hand so i guess that makes sense yep yep uh yep well uh so we got to put three acceleration is that true that or is true that? i did not yet all right so uh, cl- are you taking this first attack with never back down or what is the plan here so what's never back down which one's that one that's where you stun, stun no enemy? first Maybe i'm blocking with fury that's... okay because that doesn't make any sense to stun and then waste fury's block right damage uh take one damage and give this enemy a boost so that's me that takes the damage right because uh, it's I fury think... it's my ally yeah uh this enemy, two more boost cards. Well, thank goodness this was the chump. <laughs> so that's three, right? Yep. Yeah. So five boost oh cards. Oh my gosh. Exhaust your character. You control. Give this enemy another boost card. So that's myself that has to. All right. Wait, did we sh- did we shuffle this? I don't know. Did you? These are really the like four. These are really the three cards. Okay. No, no, no. I don't think we shuffled it. So hold up. We're going to start all that over. <laughs> Because that's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm gonna give you your help. Hold on, back. let's see. Yeah, yeah, we definitely yeah. did not shuffle. That. <laughs> I think you sidetracked me some other conversation. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, that is ridiculous. Right, so. We're two. I mean, two... to be fair, there's only nine cards, so there's a chance you'll still draw all of them. But uh, yes, not nearly as bad this time though. Uh, activation deals damage to you, exhaust your hero. So it did not do damage to me, but Fury is dead with that three damage all right so here's the bad stuff though all those cards are still in there and there's only seven cards so i might die here do we just want to chump with spider girl i know i have never backed down but boy we just saw what fury is in there the odds of me having to draw extra cards are super did high you, did you retaliate on this i didn't because okay. it was fury who blocked oh because fury um do you want me to chop i think you have to i i really don't think i can afford to to do it watch it's gonna be a nothing but take a damage and get a boost another boost card oops yeah just discard that give the enemy two more boost cards right so yeah see this is what i was afraid of yeah but like i feel like these cards are nothing though right like what just like give this enemy a tough status card another boost card we're just gonna cycle the deck 
like, like there's been zero boost. No, no, no. But there's eventually, zero. it's gonna have three boost cards, right? That's that was my issue. Yeah. Well, the problem is now there's like no, there's nothing else, right? All right. So, like, but we still have to give done. them another boost card, right? So this goes away. So hold on. Let's do them one at a time, because this would have gone away, and we would have had to oh as soon as the deck emptied actually so this would have still been here right yeah because this would have emptied here okay so then we would have flipped this up oh and we got to give it an acceleration all right so this one says discard a random card from your hand and give him a boost card so All right, so now they get another boost card. So this one is exhaust your character you control and give it a boost card. You know what I miss? Boost icons. Okay, so that's six. That's what I was saying. Like, I, I would not have survived that. Oh, uh, I guess I would have. I, I would have only taken one, I guess, but still. That would have been, I would not, yeah. not have gotten to trigger all the beneficial stuff, right? Yeah. So I, I'm glad we went that way there. All right, so now we're done. Now wait, why do we have this one also? What? He should have only had three total, right? Oh, it's fine. Just gives him a tough status card again. Yeah. Uh, I have 10 cards left in my deck and I'm not drawn either gauntlet or my suit. <laughs> well, good news is they're coming, right? So go ahead and draw your two, and then I'll draw my two. Man, only two? Remember those days where you drew one card? I mean, not this oh, game. Are you playing Ronin? Playing Ronin? Surge. Exhaust my identity. Well, good news. I'm fine with that. Good news. That is the best time to get that card. When revealed, Claw. hero, Claw attacks you. This attack deals damage, place a threat on the main scheme. All right, I'll block this for you. Do you shoot? Do you want to block this? Yeah, and never back down, right? Because I was just worried last time because I knew he was going to have three boost cards, right? I know he's not yeah, this, okay. at this point going to have three boost cards. If if okay. if my never back down works, we stun him and it's all good. Okay. All right. So I'm blocking for three, and then nerves of stealing to never back down. So that's for five, and let's see. Yeah, I was just worried because I knew he was going to have at least three three boost cards. Yeah, that's fine. So, all right, so he gets retaliated on, which gets rid of tough. I also have electrostatic armor, which gives him another damage. You get to draw a card. Then I get to draw a card, and I get to take one off the main scheme. And he's stunned. And he's stunned. So that felt much better. Oh, you got the stun. Nice. All right. Uh, that feels good. Oh, cool. Remember that guy? You know what doesn't feel good? <laughs> random a tough six health enemy for no reason hey who's villainous 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 are you kidding me <sighs> what also doesn't feel good is me being exhausted i mean ah uh, oh this was a treachery card by the way you could have ignored it but that's fine oh uh well he's stunned at least Oh, thank God. I was like, I'm dead. <laughs> I was like, I don't know that there's much I can do about that one. Yes, thank goodness he was done. Insight one. So there goes that back on. Uh, one reveal. Discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a temporal minion is discarded. Reveal that minion. And they make it a reveal too, right? Like, not just the normal Dude. stupidity. Dude, are we just going to go through the freaking deck? Still down. Did we just, are, did, are they like, didn't we just discard Oh, here we go. Them? Here we go. Sir Rassen. Guard and retaliate one. I mean. Well, at least that's not a bad reveal. What were you thinking? <laughs> Putting these guys in the deck. Holy crap. This is ridiculous. And we, I feel like we almost both have to flip down. You don't have any allies, do you? I can put bug out. What was that? I had bug. Oh, okay. All right, so I'm first player now. Yeah. I mean, there's no chance I'm not flipping down, I think. Okay. 
Uh, now, what cards am I playing? I have no idea. I mean, don't. I mean, if you're flipping down, just flip down in Golden City. Yeah, good call. Because you're not like doing Wakanda forever. Anyway. Well, yeah. Well, I was looking action. for that ancestral knowledge. Ancestral knowledge. That seems good. It does. So I'll put Dauntless. Especially with your deck that low. Yeah, I'll put Dauntless and all ancestral knowledge. Um, I mean, let's see. Certainly. I want the uh, tactical genius for sure. Uh, vibranium, right? Probably a vibranium. And how about vibranium suit? I think is one of my favorites, also. Right. Sure. Now the problem is Shuri's going to come up as well. Yep. She'll let me get my claws. It's fine. It's all fine. I think those are the right three. All right, so there's that. Those get shuffled in. All right, I should have used Widow. All right, so I'm using Widow to pay for a second hard to ignore. Got that going for me. I think Energy Barrier is the right call here, even though Med Team feels, well, I can't pay for Med Team anyway. Yeah. So Energy Barrier it is. And that, when I get the one extra point of damage that I can't deal with, will let me not do that. And it stays in play, which is the nice part. All right. I mean, I feel like it's as good as it could have gone there. <laughs> Not great, right. but I mean, is what it is. I mean, the problem is this guy's villainous, which is terrible. Mm hmm. All right. So here, do I just ping him? I think you ping the to get tough. tough off? Yeah, I think you're pinging the tough. All right. Right up. All right, we good? Maybe. I mean, we're not good, but I'm going to deck myself here. By the way, drawing an extra card next turn. Oh, which makes Shuri Oh, deck. Okay, that's fine. That's not a problem. With Golden City. Uh, so I can't Yeah, desperate defense, energy bear. All right. So, enter, uh, enemy turn. Unfortunately, it gets four right off the bat. I guess that's fine, because it was going away anyway. Um, yeah, one reveal, minion. discard cards from the encounter deck until a minion is discarded. Put it into play, engage with the first player. That's me. That's... Oh, man. This is like endgame here. Okay. Uh, did it say revealed? It did say revealed, right? Yep. So that means he surges? How does that work? Do I just get one in my play area? Because that's not during okay. a normal... Yeah, so that just means you draw the card. Yeah, you just draw the card. No, oh, it's into play. actually. Into play. Okay, thank goodness. Yeah. All right. So that's as good as you that could have worked bonus out. Card? What was that? You didn't want your bonus card? I mean, I have enough bonus cards as it is. All right. All right, and then, and then each Thor, right? So, well, first, so he, sche he schemes. All right. Thank goodness. For a good two, and then another two. So yep. four. Cool. All right, so now everybody attacks you. Mm-hmm. I assume you're just going to take block the normal one yourself and chump against him since it's two cards for his. Yep. All right. One, yep. two. So nothing. Two more. Man. <laughs> Terrence, what did you do to us? You're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> Five. I mean, I chumped it. Feels good. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying this stupid side scheme is terrible. All right, so he boosts also. So that's one attack. Are you going to defend it? Oh, you do no, have target I acquired. Like I, I, I mean, certainly not for that one, but... Yeah, I, I feel like I can't. Like, we, we have to... We can't defend all game. We have to, like, do actual things. There you I go. mean, that's only one. That, that feels good. I mean, we've got to get rid of some of this. This is... This is no good. All of this, no good. 
Uh, all right, so there's been a lot of chat. Uh, have you been paying attention to it or? No, I've been dying um, from Claw. That's, that's <laughs> well, let's draw on. our cards and then maybe we'll we'll go to the chat. You guys in the chat, let us know if there's something sp uh, we should definitely cover. Um, that way we don't have to look through everything. But I'm gonna I'm gonna outsource this. again. So we got another acceleration. Uh, do I just take the surge? Or I have the surge, but do I just take the the like bonus surge? Probably right. Or do you get rid of it? I mean, this is card is becoming two cards, and you can get rid of two cards basically, right? No, I only get to cancel the one revealed. It's not like widow, widow ally. No, right here, dude. Oh, of that trash, you discard it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You would cancel drawing two cards. That's your call. Seems good. I mean, the only thing worse is Shadows of the Past, right? I mean, this literally gives well, you... Well, I don't, I don't have enough upgrades to feel bad about Shadows of the Past. All right, so would you have decked there or no? Was that card the only card left, or was that card shuffled? It already decked by the time when I gave you your cards. Okay, all right. So that's fine. So we're in the right spot then. Uh, so where are we doing damage here? I don't know, but go ahead and fl draw yours. Let's 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 figure out all the bad crap before we uh, have to worry. Oh, oh, that's right. You're doing damage from your thing. Got it. Yeah, the villainous one seems the worst. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Why? <laughs> Why? At least this one only has four. I mean, for the love of God. Yeah, five, five, one per player. Which just puts it out of range of getting rid of it. Are you kidding me? Okay. Your 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 turn to enjoy. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> a surge. Why not? One revealed. Give the villain in each minion engage with you a tough status card. <laughs> uh, oh, this is getting to the point of silliness at this point. Uh, I mean, I'll just plink that off when they when I retaliate. But the problem is, I don't even know if I can survive them attacking me. Like my minion. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, reveal your set aside. But but we don't have any set aside. So this just surges, right? Yeah. If your nemesis minion does not enter the game this way, this card gains surge. Yeah, it just surges. So it just surges. All right. So better better you than me. I mean. Certainly, but that still means everybody in the audience has to drink because, uh, oh, quick strike. But well, at least you're on alter ego. I am on alter ego, but literally, my minions will kill me at this point, just as a heads up. Will they? Oh, they will. They do five. I can't block, I can't, yeah. I guess with the energy yeah. barrier, they would not. There you go. I can energy barrier. I assume you can get sure, yeah. Or something, right? Oh, I'm going to have to get Shuri out. Well, let's start with um, Golden City. Now, how does that work when I only have one card? Do I get to draw the second card from... I think so. Anybody know the answer to that? All right. So, we've got some chat. Let's see. Uh... So there's just some talk uh, from Miguel Paz, who I've never seen before. Welcome, Miguel. Uh, what do you guys recommend next? I'm thinking Captain America, my favorite, plus Red Skull expansion. Well, we had a whole podcast on that exact topic, what to buy after the core set. Um, and we said, buy your favorite hero and buy Red Skull as your first purchases. So I, I still stand by that. How about you, Terrence? Yeah, I think, that's, I think Red Skull is still a great... I, I would even say before even a hero pack, uh, just for the variety, but uh, if you're able to pick two things up. KLBSNSD says definitely get those. So he agrees with us, or she. I'm sorry, I don't want to make assumptions here. 
Wasteland says uh, Cap is awesome, and Red Skull is a great campaign to start with. Plus, just really love Hawkeye. I love Hawkeye as well. I love Spider Woman. Um, so it's got two really good heroes and a bunch of fun uh, things. And don't forget, because I forgot, you could play those as one-offs. You don't just have to play the campaign. So it's fun just for a lot of content. Uh, Brant says the same thing. He agrees. Yep, next is your favorite and Rise of Red Skull. K-L-B-S-N-D or S-D. Please let me know if you want me to call you something else because that's a lot of just letters. Uh, uh, Red Skull is probably the next best next buy. Your favorite hero is also a bonus. Yeah, so everybody's agreeing here. Another vote for Red Skull from Josh Johnson. Uh, Miguel Pasquez says, thanks a lot, guys. I'm going to do that for sure. I'm hyped for this game. It's it's awesome. I mean, don't take what we're doing. <laughs> this is Terrence trying to kill me. <laughs> like, don't take what we're doing as like how it's gonna go. Um, you know, if you brought brought Brant on, we would just be winning, right? So you're saying Brant is is our good luck charm, or are you yeah, saying that yeah, I, you, I well, just bring just us like, down? No, you just like you bring him as a third player, the ace in the hole, kind of. You, you do realize we lost two of the three games we played with Brant last week, right? When we were trying to speed run. Of us, not him, right? <laughs> what was that? That's because of us, not him, right? Oh, is that who, what it was? <laughs> yes. Uh, no, what I'm saying is he can't even save us. That's that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, Wasteland Saber says, I always feel a little jealous of new people getting into the game because it's so much fun picking up the first time and figuring it out. You know what? I agree, but I don't agree um, with that comment from Wasteland Sniper. The reason I don't agree is because I have fun playing with what we have. Right, I have fun trying new stuff. I've never played this modular before. Last week we did a speed run with Brant. Right, you're doing things after you've played this game enough that you wouldn't do. We're messing around with deck construction, things like that. I'm going back to Black Panther, so I feel still feel like even after hundreds of plays that are so much new to explore that I haven't hit the end of my exploration yet. I mean, people are actually like, oh, I can't wait for the next thing. I can't wait for the next thing. But honestly, I'm actually glad we get a little break here to slow down and play some of the stuff that we haven't had. I haven't played nearly as much Ant-Man as I want. I probably only played him three times, right? So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I'm always, uh, people, you know, I think have similar comments with even like Lord of the Rings because it's like dead now right. or on, on a break. Um, but there's so much content there. Uh, there's a lot of content here. Uh, and there's still decks that I, I want to explore. Like I was just talking to you and Brandt about uh, a Wasp Justice deck that is built around, um, uh, what is it? That one Justice card that came out. I forget what it's called. All right. Might something. So I think next uh, Thursday we're doing Ant-Man and Wasp then. Because I want to play more Ant-Man. You want to play Wasp? Uh, I mean, we don't have to play them together, but, you know, we like to keep them uh, in theme there. So... I think that'll be our next but Yeah, week. just just a whole deck around that. And because, like, every time you clear it, when you play that event, uh, and then Herner Giant Form allows you to basically go across any number of schemes. Right. So you could just, like, clear one, and then, like, it doesn't matter that you're, like, boosting her to really high Thor numbers. You can just clear as much as you want on the other so stuff. So maybe like next week we too. play the same one because I feel like we're not winning tonight. <laughs> maybe we play the same campaign with those decks. Um and see if we can do better against this uh, impossible setup here. Um, uh, making an entrance is the card I'm talking about. ID Jester says, I think victory is a long shot. Sorry. Yes, I agree with you. Uh, That's true of a lot of our games, though. Uh, oh, it's KLB, not K. Oh, yeah. Uh, KLB says, you can call me KLB. Lots of laughs. I'm a he, by the way. All right, KLB. Uh, so KLB says, I can imagine how fun that is. Then planning your next pack to buy. You know, but you can do that even um, as we are, right? You could take all your stuff. It's like taking apart Legos, right? You could literally take apart all your decks, put them away, and then reveal to yourself one at a time if you really want to go back and remember what it was like. I think people are remembering it more fondly than they than they think, though. Because I remember it was hard to build decks at first, right? There just wasn't enough cards in the pool to make enough interesting decks. I think there's just so much more we can do with it now. Now, if you're playing... You know, pre-cons, it doesn't matter. But I, I definitely remember the game getting better as we've gotten more stuff. Yeah, I, I think people also, there's like a bit of it too. Like if you get in late, like I remember calling in to Lord of the Rings literally like two years ago or whatever when the channel started for his YouTubes, right? Yeah. That was like two years ago. And he literally bought everything. And the game was like seven years old at that point. So 
you're talking about way more content that even exists than Marvel Champions uh, for Lord of the Rings. And uh, there's a part of it where you kind of just miss the different kind of meta points, right? Like, yeah. as we've been playing, it's been cool to kind of just, like, certain cards are really good, but then they're going to fall out of favor, I think, at certain points. Like, they'll be more niche, whereas they were well, staples. Beat and then that... Yeah, exactly. Beat Cop's like, a perfect uh, example. Beat Cop, people are like, oh my gosh, Beat Cop's so overpowered. And then you realize how slow the tempo on it is. And <laughs> when you need to have faster tempo games, like Beat Cop just doesn't work anymore. Um, yeah. So I think that's like, that's, I mean, like the part you miss that is kind of neat of just like certain cards definitely had their moments to shine. And that's, and some cards will just always be staple, but it's hard to predict kind of all that stuff, right? And uh, probably even just the ways of like, at the time when we played certain heroes more, it was definitely in the time it came out. Yeah. You know, uh, you know we're, we're going back to some of the older stuff, but like, uh, I think you just kind of miss out on those things. Not that it's the end of the world or anything, uh, but uh, that is a part of, I think that is part of that game. And so I think it's very common uh, for people to even like Lord of the Rings who own the collection just to kind of constrain their deck building uh, because they have been playing with the whole collection the whole time. Yeah. It's just to be like, let me do progression style where like I am learning the card pool and I have to maybe like use, look at cards that I may not have looked at. Right. I think it's so much like brand speed run thing. Right. It's just like forcing you to look at cards that maybe you haven't looked at as much. Absolutely. No, I agree. All right. Um, so uh, Miguel Paz. So a bunch of new names today. I love it. Uh, and I know I've read some of his comments today as well already, but uh, for me, there's no better solo game that keeps me coming back. Game plan setup and all the combinations of regular new heroes and expansions. Damn, this game is infinite. Yep, I agree. If you look at my top solo games, because we don't just cover Marvel here. We cover a lot of cooperative games. This is number one for me. I don't think it's number one for you. You like Lord of the Rings better, right? Yeah, Lord of the Rings is my number for one. For solo it's... too? Uh, yeah, I, I generally play it solo nowadays. Okay, uh, multi-handed solo or yeah, true I, solo? I, uh, I do true solo. Okay. I, at this point, I think you can do it pretty well. Just the card pool is deep enough. Uh, it does just... I think Marvel is more flexible in like the kind of decks you can build because the hero cards are generally pretty strong and all around. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, like Hulk, Hulk is still bad at thwarting. Uh, yes. You know, so there's I mean, Hulk's, certain, Hulk's, certain heroes, Hulk's bad think, at everything. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. I, I think heroes that have that 2 2 2 stat line are generally going to be overall very, probably to start like pretty decent at solo. Yeah. Um, out the gate, just because you are flexible and like being able to attack or thwart. Um, um, and you're not kind of forced oftentimes into specific aspects to kind of make up for it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I would say probably Lord of the Rings is not as good of a true solo game as Marvel uh, for its time in the life cycle. All right, we're going to stop but, you there. Yeah. <laughs> because that is all I needed to hear. <laughs> it's better than Lord of the Rings. All right. <laughs> sure. No, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, you're right. Lord of the Rings just has many more years of content. So you like it more because there's just more to go on. And you like the deck building there more as well, I assume. Th that night, I, I think I like the, the non-boss battle experience to some degree, too. Like, some of my favorite quests here that I've taught you about are, like, the Kang and the Escape Museum. So I like well, kind of the Well, there's some of my favorites, too. And I feel like we're going to get more of those as time goes on. Yeah. Um, but, yes, a lot of these are still boss battles. Um, so we got a lot of back and forth that people do love it, love the modularity. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, I think you missed the comment way up where Brant said uh, ha you had not played Kang with... Uh, anachronauts no no this is awful i mean i can't imagine kang but <laughs> are you kidding me like this feels worse almost not exactly but almost worse than uh kree fanatic i mean this is a really tough modular i mean that's not, that's a bold statement i feel like but look at how much boosting and like putting them back in and extra card draw i mean there's two of these extra card yeah, draw but i i think i think it's rough uh i think it's tension design to be rough but Cree Fanatic feels just like a truck. Well, Cree like Fanatic himself is a truck, but the rest of the cards don't do much. This, every card in here is just brutal, and including this, who's almost as bad as Ronin himself. I mean, not as much health, but still, I mean, anything that's villainous is pretty terrible, right? Yeah, but at least you can stun him. Yeah, I mean, I guess the difference is it doesn't have any two as many two and three boost icon cards, but still, uh, I don't know. Uh, do, 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 do. 
Uh, Victor Von Doom says, yes, I was worried about getting a card holder for Ant-Man, but only played him once, so not sure need to worry about keeping it fresh. You know what? I actually, like, I got the card holders that you suggested to me, and we'll, we could talk about that at the end if people really want to know or see what they look like. Uh, I can go get mine. But I actually kind of think it's cool that the card opens up, so I actually don't mind it just being, op- you know, a card that opens either. Like, I don't know. You're not going to, unless Ant-Man's like your favorite hero and you're playing him every day, like, you're not going to rip up the card that bad, you know, and it doesn't matter. It's not like it's shuffled into anything. So I think it's fine. And um, so that's my thought. Yeah. There, there's just certain people, though. Like, I, I know for me with FFG's new replacement policies, I would be pretty sad if my Ant-Man ripped. Uh, so, I mean, you could also it, just it, buy a new one, right? Yeah. Um, assuming it's not out of print. Well, sure. Or not out of print, but like between the printing cycles, which you never know with FFG. Um, but I, I've also picked up alt art copies of him on eBay, and then you get like basically two copies of like oh, nice. alter ego on both sides and one one kind of, you know, it's the actual normal card size. So the nice thing is if I actually bring an Ant-Man deck around, I don't have to like lug this like massive uh, one in my yeah, that's which I guess you would just fold yours, but. Well, no, my, that's, well, that's mine is in, mine holds it in the box right now, but my actual, my Marvel Champions box is full. So the next campaign I get, I'm going to have to buy another, a second box for carrying this stuff around. Um, yeah, but for me, like, I, I can just put it in a normal, like, deck box. So if I had an ambient deck and I was coming to play, I could bring it over to your house or whatever with the smaller cards now. So Steven Johnson's blaming us for the trouble we're in right now. He says, the, a big problem is neither of you can thwart uh, well, and that's giving you so many more encounter cards. That is absolutely right. This is brutal right now. We're trying to get rid of it, but we have not been very successful. And with this in front of us, I don't know that it's going to get any easier. All right. Well, we've delayed the inevitable uh, inevitable enough. Are you, are you just stalling now? I, I think we're, we're just stalling to see. Uh, so you're going to be first player because I was just first player. And uh, all right. So I have some options here. I think. Oh, chase them down is nice. Well, what am I killing though? I can only hit for four. I mean, you're killing whatever the heck you can. Is there literally I nothing? Because uh, everything's like five or more. That is terrible. Um, but what I can do is I can burn everything to play Covert Ops. Well, and so for, here's for... something that's stupid. What if you did Looking for Trouble? Why would I do that? That's the main scheme only. Remove three from the main scheme, which wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, with it accelerating at five a turn. Removing three wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Right? And you get a minion you could kill and overkill to then do chase them down twice. Yeah, but I could just play covert ops and flip down. I mean, there's that too. Four. <laughs> uh, but then you lose your suit? No, no, I use one, two, three, keep my suit, thwart, play covert ops, he's confused, I remove four and I thwart to remove- Oh, it's only three, suit. right, right, right. Yeah, go for it. Can you play this? No, that's a hero response. No. All right. So you're taking four off the main and confusing? No, I was thinking about just getting rid of a Serpent Throne. You want me to do main? Well, let's not do this one, right? That's like the worst one to get rid of because there's bad. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. This is the worst one to get rid of. You're right. This one or this one? Yes. So this one's better. You're right. You're smarter than me. I was like, wait a minute. Let's not get rid of the one that shuffles all those terrible people back in. <laughs> yeah, I, I looked at my hand and I thought about this. I was just like, this is the side scheme I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, no, that was brilliant. Don't forget crew quarters. Uh, yep, so I'm gonna heal up, and I'll have, I'll be decking myself, unfortunately. But I mean, the question is, how do I survive this round? I mean, I guess I'm getting Shuri out and chumping with her. Yeah, so I was planning on killing something, but then everyone got tough. Yeah, I mean, it's a problem. It's definitely a problem. Um, I mean, do you want me to? No, not no, no. So this? the question, going back to the question before, because I was trying to Golden City before, and I never did it. The question is, I got one card. Do I shuffle and then draw a new card? I mean, we did that for the villain when he was drawing cards for boost. Okay. So I feel like you're going to play that way, then you get your second card. So the question is, do you want to Shuri before you do that? Oh, I no, guess it's, it's from dad. your draw pile with Shuri. Okay. Um. All right, so I do need to take a boost or a extra encounter card because that's what we need in this game, extra Wait, encounter Wait, well, I'm removing a Serpent Throne, right? That, that was the plan? What was that? I'm 
thwart, I'm thwarting usurp the throne to get rid of it for two. Oh, right. Did you? I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were ready. I thought you had blocked or whatever. It's gone. Get out of here. All right. Well, that's good. So now we're back to the status quo, of just two. Well, plus this one that I just drew. Well, I ain't mine, but it's just like now we're down to two. Oh, you're gonna draw of... one too? Yep. <laughs> so we're gonna have three. We're gonna have two each. So the question is, do I do Shuri? No, probably not. I mean, uh, I feel like you Fury. Do right? I do Fury? That was the question. Because I mean, Shuri would just chump anyway. I mean, the benefit of Shuri is she's only two. So one, two, three, four to put Fury into play. I mean, Fury is just so much better stat line, uh, which lets me draw three. Or do I thwart for three and just get rid of this thing? Uh, there's that option, or do you use it to take out Terminatrix? What, what, I guess, like, what's your plan for damage and stuff? I mean, I'm going to block, I'm going to chump him, I'm going to defend myself, um, and then I could probably plink off damage, right, with energy barrier. I could kill or do something with energy barrier. I don't know. Oh, I got a second uh, energy barrier, too. Yeah, I, I guess I'm not really going to do that with energy barrier. If I defend one, I'm, you have to defend him I'm taking too, right? three. I mean, I feel like I want Tactical Genius in play, and I also want Vibranium. A vibranium Suit's really important right now. So, I mean, the question is, then do you draw three cards and just play Shuri, and then you Shuri and Nick to do something? I mean, that's probably a good option, because then I get two Chumpers, right? And then do I just heal myself? Okay. Well, that's only three damage. You're still not taking something out. What do you mean? I could take out Weapons right, Runner, right. I mean, which isn't great, but it's something. Yeah, but you can end your... Weapons Runner doesn't matter because you can energy barrier it away. I mean, the question is, do I use three and myself to take out Illegal Arms Factory? Like, between those two and myself, I can get rid of Illegal Arms Factory. And then you draw... So, I, I think I take the three, right? Okay. Hope to get some Vibranium. Or Wakanda Forever is not the worst thing in the world. So I well, sure it's any upgrade, so you can pull like another energy barrier if you have it in your deck, since you just decked yourself. What do you mean? I don't know how many. No, you. Well, you could draw an energy barrier to use as a basic resource, right? Which is so what sure I'm going to do. Upgrade. Yeah. So I'm going to put Shuri into play. I'm going to get energy barrier. Oh my gosh! Why did I do that? <laughs> I feel like you've done this before. I I feel. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh oh that's terrible <laughs> uh, well the, the Wakanda forever changes things right because you get to now do something yes it, I mean if I want to Wakanda forever I should have an energy barrier in here right did I not have an energy barrier let's search Oh, I do have one. All right, so I'm gonna draw that as my. Uh... Wait, wait, th isn't this in play? Which one? Oh, this hard to ignore. That was. Oh yeah, yeah. Wait, what? What? Oh. I pushed one, but I thought I was drawing the one energy barrier, but I, my hand was apparently over the hard to ignore. Yes. Okay. All right. So I can get out vibranium suit if I want. And start healing myself and throwing damage around that way. I feel like that's not a terrible... That allows you to not flip. What? It allows you to not not have to exhaust when you're flipped right now as well. So, so it can... allows me to not have to heal right now. Because it heals me too. Right? So it just lets me put yeah. out some damage. Yeah. And heal. So I think I do that, right? But the problem is then Tactical Genius and Energy Daggers are gone if I do that. Is it smarter to keep... I mean, I feel like Tactical Genius is a short-term play, 
I feel like Vibranium Suit is a longer term play. I feel like right now we're so worried about threat, and we should be. Ah, but gosh, there's so much threat on the board. I mean, the other option is to go Tactical Genius, right? I mean, you could go in the middle, right? You could do Vibranium Suit and then thwart for five to get rid of something, right? Well, that was the plan. That was the plan. Okay. All right, I mean, I do have the cards that draw these back in, so they're not gone forever. Oh, the Ancestral? The ancestral Knowledge, so I can get Tactical Genius back in. I mean, I don't think I hold these, right? That that seems like a lot to hold. No. All right, so I'm flipping. I'm going to thwart for five to get rid of this. Feels pretty good. I mean, it okay. does. Two side team? Definitely does. Uh, no, I, de I definitely need to put damage on these. Um, and then I'm going to Wakanda Forever to heal so myself too. On Terminatrix, then I see. Or yours, right? Yours is the the real nasty one. And then you can overkill it with your hand cannon next turn, right? Sure. I think that's the way to go. All right. With all that being done, <laughs> I mean, I could chump with Shuri too, right? I, I don't care that much about her. All right. So let's ready up. Draw cards. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Uh, how is Star Lord in this situation? Oh, Star Lord would be freaking wonderful in this situation. Although a lot of his cards have maximums, right? Like max three or whatever. But maybe not. Some of them don't. That would be amazing. Well, no, because all of these cards come out during the enemy phase. So he actually. Oh, yeah. Uh, I could have healed you. Did you want me to do that instead? Um, That's your call. Okay, I'm fine with that. Yeah, so yeah, somebody pointed that out in the who who pointed that out? Let's give him credit. Josh Walton. Oh, oh Stephen Johnson. It? No, Johnson. Stephen Johnson said that. Thank you. Uh, Brant says yes, we do get the other card. By the way, uh, Dan says I just got a couple small expansions of Sentinels of the Multiverse, and it was set of like forty cards and a divider, and just thought. Why does Fantasy Flight hate us? Just give us those dividers. Uh, so there are dividers that I use. I print myself. Um, now, I, I use a 110-pound paper and a color printer, so it's not free. But, um, yeah, I do that. And actually, at some point, I may even want to print those dividers a second time. And I have a laminator and laminate the dividers. So I'm thinking about I might do that. Do you... Do you need to reprint for the lamination or why print this? Oh, time? yeah, you're right. You know what? I could just laminate them the way they are. You're, you're absolutely right. It's just more of a – it's easier when there are just one full page of paper. But you're right. It actually would take up less laminating material if I just laminate them as is. It's just I'll have to line oh, them see. up and all that stuff. Um, plus, if I print them a second time to laminate, then I don't have to pull them all out and then figure out where the dividers go again. I could just replace one at a time, if that makes sense. Sure. Um, yeah, I, 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 I've been making dividers at FedEx. Okay. So I just go and you can, you can either just buy one ten or buy it from them directly, um, and just bring it and then kind of use their cloud printer. So I just upload the PDFs from BGG, uh, the Lee Lee dividers, I think. Nice. And then. Uh, yeah, just print them out, and then uh, they have basically like a five hundred dollar paper cutter. I looked up the bottle they have because I was just like, "This is kind of annoying," and it's COVID, you know, pandemic. I don't know if I want to yeah. be be here for an hour, like cut things. And I was just like, I also don't want to spend five hundred bucks on this like thing because I don't like the. I always feel like when I use the hand ones, they like come out crooked for gotcha. some reason. It like moves the paper. Yeah. Um. Yeah. All right, man. Let's do so, this. We had five to the main scheme. Nice. I mean, that seems like a lot, by the way. So I still think I'm going to go with my plan here. And I actually don't think I'm going to block with Shuri. I'm going to keep her around for another turn. So here's my plan. 
My plan is you're first player, so it doesn't matter what my plan is. So he's going to scheme against you, but wasn't he confused? Why do I feel like he was confused? Yes, he was, he was We he forgot was to put confused on, on there. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm pretty sure he's confused, but we do have to add one for this. Oh, it's yeah. villainous. We do have to draw a boost. Son of a gun. <sighs> this is not good, Terrence. This is very, very... But you're gonna, you're gonna, he's, you're hard to ignore. I mean, I, I got that, but it's, no, you I, 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 I get, I get all what you're saying. <laughs> it's just not great. All right. So Fury's going to block Claw. Um, exhaust your character, a character you control. All right. So that's why Shuri is beneficial. <laughs> exhaust Shuri. Uh, discard a random card from your hand. Oh, do you want to? That's a hero response. Gosh okay. darn it. So I'm going to flip. By the way, I figured out you could do this. You flip, and then you randomize them while they're still in your hand. And you can uh, do that instead of taking them out of our hand, which we've been doing. Oh, no. That is not the one I wanted to lose. You know what? I may just not use anything. I was going to use it to ready myself. That was my thought. I was going to desperate defense to ready myself. Um, and then I could defend some of this incoming damage, but I may just have to take all this now, right? Without desperate defense. Um, I don't think I want to do anything else. Okay. All right. So this goes away. This comes here, right? Yeah. All right. So first attack, I take two. Oh, wait. Am I done with all these cards? No. I'm sorry. I had to do this and boost it again. All right. So Fury takes two damage. He's still alive, but whatever. We know he's gone at the end of the round. All right. So I'm going to take two from this, and one goes back. So I already took my two damage. One goes back with... Um... So actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to energy barrier one of those to take off the tough from these guys, right? Weapon runner sure. attack me, retaliate, take another one off to do one more here. So they're gone. Uh, and I take no damage from that. This one's going to give me two. I think I just take the two on this one. You're not going to barrier? Energy barrier is so good for protecting me from that, like, one extra thing, right? Like, oh, man, I'm yeah. one over. And I don't necessarily want to shuffle it in right now either. So I think I'm going to hold on to it for this point. Um, Did you want to defend to trigger your other stuff? Oh, I need to defend. Yeah, right? never mind. You're right. Yeah, because this is way better. So that's two. Uh, so he actually takes a second damage when I defend because of electrostatic armor. And then I draw a card. Did you want to stun them? No. 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 I, I, want I want the, the cards. cards at this point. Um, now, it didn't work out. Um, but it lets me hold my Vibranium till next turn. Or hold my Never okay. Back Down, maybe. Actually, probably the better call. And just waste a Vibranium. Right. That's not great. Yeah. This could be game. Three? Three. Wait, did I take two off? from these i don't think i did definitely did not by the way i turned them i never took the two off all right wait we didn't draw our cards by the way that was just one you had <laughs> you still have yeah. to draw a two in fact and i have to draw one cool. Cool. i mean of all the things i'm not mad at any of these comparatively like there's way worse stuff we could have, right? Just more more sizing. <laughs> exactly. When revealed, either spend those resources or exhaust each character you control. Ha ha, sucker. Well you, well, you can't exhaust, right? Well, and I can't spend them. I don't have to spend something. I don't think. Can they force me to spend something I don't have? I thought that I thought that was the rule. What do you guys think on that one? For oh, right man. now. Uh, take two damage, claw heals two. Oops. Uh, 
If I reveal Sonic when all my characters are exhausted, can I still choose the option to exhaust all characters? No. If possible, you would have to spend the resources if all the characters you control are exhausted. Sonic Boom is a choice, but you must choose an option that you can fulfill. If you cannot fulfill either option, then you must do as much as you can, which typically means discarding one or two all right. resources. I discarded my three. Can. Why am I exhausted? Oh, because I defended that one. Yeah. All right. Oh. That's tough. That's tough. All right. Yep. So, I think I put in hard to ignore, obviously, right? And then, do I hold never back down or Wakanda forever? I think I hold never back down, right? Yep. Man, this is... Oh, did I have... Oh, I did have them all attack. Yep. All right. Your turn. <laughs> that was terrible. Terrence, I don't feel good about any of this. Uh, if you can't... Uh, ID Jester said the same thing. You have to spend if you can. All right. So to maximize stuff, you think I use Lion Weight to play Safe House and then use Safe House to ramp back? I think so. I mean, that makes the most sense, right? I, the only the only thing then, is you lose one card in that transition. Yeah, and then I use combat training, I think, to pay for Widow's Gauntlet. Sure. Yeah, obviously heal. Uh, and then use that to pay for Lion and Wait to draw a card. Wait, Lion and Wait is a preparation. That doesn't go away. Yeah, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, that sucks. So I guess you play the other. Gauntlet. And do I look? Do do I look for trouble? I feel like I don't want to. I mean, that's your call. It seems probably no. I think you're gonna probably just pay for the other widow's gauntlet right now. Right. Do I though? I mean, what else are you gonna do? I looking for looking for trouble allows us to remove three thwart off the main scheme. That's true. That's an issue right now. I feel like we have a lot of lost like conditions gotta, staring us in the face right now. Yeah, I feel like we got to do it because we're stuck between a rock and a hard place, and this is terrible. Right. Does it reveal right, it? Oh, until... okay. Well, I mean, of all the things, that is the least bad, I guess. Now, we're going to add five at the beginning of this, and we only need six to lose, just as a reminder. Okay. So do I thwart... Or do I kill stuff? I mean, can you kill anything? Probably if kills. you can kill something, I think you do. I think you get rid of this thing. Yeah. Kill him. So the question is, then, do I use line weight on... Should I have used line weight to get rid of this tough? Right? I mean, that's your call. Three damage. Do you want to get rid of the tough? Then I get a trigger well, you... something somewhere, right? Sure. You do one extra damage to something. Maybe plink off the other tough, right? Either that yeah. or get him within two, which is a good number for us. Although you can kill him next turn with your hand cannon. Although I feel like we're saying that yeah. about a lot of things, so I don't know. All right, so this plinked off with yeah, that. Let's... Do you want to get rid of the tough or do you want to plink? Yeah, let's get rid of the okay. tough. So nothing's tough. So how much I overkill? I overkilled by he had one. three, so you overkilled by one. Yep. And that goes to claw, right? Yep. Take that claw. What was that? Just take that claw. <laughs> take that that one overkill. Uh, I mean, look, we're surviving here. Like, I mean, I feel like we're not far away from dying. Well, losing, losing and thriving both. You know what I mean? I feel like either is a possibility. Cure. You know what? Hold on. If you plink him for one. And then you would have Wakanda forever instead? No, but I'm thinking if you plink him for one, I can energy barrier and retaliate. At least he'll be dead. You know what I mean? Sure. Sure. Um, or if I decide to defend him. Which is probably the better case. He'll just die naturally of my retaliate and my electrostatic armor. Does that make sense? Although yeah. I feel like I got never back down to re to block here. I could use Shuri to take one damage from. Oh, 
So you can't take one damage from anything. I don't know. All right. We'll figure it out. We'll figure Maybe it out. I block for you. Does that make sense? Just to trigger all my stuff? Or do I just never worry? That not, should I have kept never back down instead of Wakanda forever is the question. Like, am I just blocking this because I'm Shuri-ing? You know what I mean? And I just let Shuri block the boss? Or, sure. I mean, there's always a chance you'll draw some. A, a thing, yeah, right? that's true. All right. There's also a chance you'll draw Wakanda forever. So yeah. All right. That. I'll just keep it like it is. All right. You ready and up? Yeah. I got two never back downs. And a desperate defense. Well, that feels actually pretty good. Desperate defense. A desperate defense feels better than never back down right now. That is for sure. Um, the problem is I have nothing to pay for. I mean, a fighting fit, two, two damage is something right now, right? <laughs> like, two damage is a not nothing card or not nothing result right now. Okay, uh, so we are to their turn. So, one, two, three, four, five, which is one away from us losing. Claw's going to attack with his boost. I'm going to block with Shuri. Plus two, so that's a total of four damage, which kills Shuri. Thank you, Shuri. That's all right. I want her in my deck anyway. I feel like I need her. <laughs> I need to draw her. All right, so I'm going to take the two from this, which is going to put one retaliate on here. Then I'm going to block this one with desperate defense to ready myself up again. Play all this and this. I'm going to draw a card. I'm going to do two damage to him because I defended. And so electrostatic armor hits and then I retaliate. So that's two dead. I also take three off the main scheme. And is that it? Is that where we are? Yeah. So I can probably get rid of some of this stuff, by the way, now with my vibranium. Okay. So we'll worry about that when it gets to my turn. We'll let's do you now. <laughs> that was just his attack on me. Do, wait, right, do you want so me to block in desperate guess, defense for you? Sure. Or, or uh, uh, never back down for you. You don't die. Sure. If you don't die. I mean, that's the question, right? I block for three. He's attacking for two. I do have at least this target acquired. So if he gets like the crappy boost, I can cancel the boost that will boost so five well and i do have a energy barrier too let's do it all right so never back down with the never, never back, back down. down the only negative now is i can't get rid of one of these things with my vibranium but whatever i mean it is what it is i think this is the right move so i'm taking three or i'm defending for five Uh, so right now that's four damage, five, six damage. Okay. So I'm going to obviously energy barrier that that's why I saved it. So I took no damage. And so he's stunned. So he's stunned. He lost his tough on my retaliate. He becomes stunned. And he also takes one from my electrostatic armor. And I think I did all of that correctly. Sweet. Have, and I took mine too. Okay. So we still have to do our cards. So I take two. Yep, but it's only, it's, but it's only, it's only three I mean, cards now. It feels, like I said, I feel like we're slowly but surely digging ourselves out of like the deepest hole anyone has ever seen. Uh, that's it. Game over. I guess not necessarily, but... Oh, can you cancel that? No. It's your treasury, and I don't have it out. That's four. That's game. Sure. Gosh darn it. Ah! So close. So Place four set on each side scheme. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, this, this thing. <laughs> this is like, wow. All right, guys. Well, that was, uh, that was a thing. That was definitely a thing. Holy moly. 
This is a this is a tough challenge. I, you know, just it's it's there to keep you honest, Peter. When people complain the game is too easy. No, yeah, right. The people if people who complain well, the game also, is too easy have never watched decks, us play. Maybe. Clearly, because we. <laughs> Also, maybe bring better deck. Well, I, I, it's probably I have to be like Brent. I, I feel like my deck was not up to par. I mean, my deck was fine, but my deck was fine against a standard challenge, not against what we put ourselves against this week. We could have done temporal, I guess, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, I mean, that was my bad. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. I feel like we should do this again next week with Ant Man and Wasp. The same exact setup. Ant Man and Wasp, but we build decks to just wreck face right you're gonna be our justice deck i'll do an aggression ant man and and we'll just destroy stuff next week so let me know if that's what you guys want to see it's on thursday next week so uh you know a little bit earlier uh i don't know what did you think what did you think of your deck what did you think of i mean i never felt like i got to see my deck i, I guess that's how i felt <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I I do feel like Widow definitely hurts a lot if you don't get... Like, I feel like these three are her kind of key cards. Uh, I, obviously, all the prep cards are great. Hold on, but, I'm not um, on. Just having no acceleration at all for Lily until the last So, turns, wait, which so three are you talking about? Like, the last... Oh, the yeah, you never got suit. those. And literally, you never used the gauntlets. You used one of them once. Well, that's because that's the turn I right. played it. I used it the turn yep. I played it. Yep. And then we lost. Um, yeah. So that, that's always like bad feels, but that's just the luck of the Well, draw, we right? never got our build up. Um, like, I, I literally, I had no more than one upgrade out ever for the entire game. Uh, one of my Vibranium whatever upgrades, my uh, Panther upgrades. Literally max one the entire game. Yeah, and I was kind of on the back foot for most of that game as well, right? So we also got extra card uh, draw you know, like I, super early. Yeah, turn one or two, um, and so like, you know, I had to pitch Winter Soldier, which always feels bad because he's supposed to be a mostly free yep. card. I feel like if you ever get set up, and I was basically prioritizing stuff in the moment, right? Like, I discarded three prep cards to play Dance of Death. Because that was the right call. Right. That turn, Absolutely. Right? What? Well, so got rid of playing, three minions. When you're, yeah. When you're when you're basically like, I think prioritizing not being able to build up at this point, um, and that kind of felt how a lot of the game well, was. It's just like I never had more than. two And that's why I said at the up. end, I felt like we finally were getting there. You know what I mean? We finally had built up. I felt like if we could have survived one or two more turns, and just gotten rid of this thing. Yeah, but then, you know, so that's like a just. Like I mean, they just the keep coming. They just kept coffin. coming out, right? There are three of them in this deck. Is the problem? There are three plus card cards, and we got all of them super early with heroes that wanted to build up. Yeah. Uh, and and honestly, the big problem for you is one of my favorite cards for Widow is the um, grappling hook, but these aren't treacheries, right? The the thing that killed us this game was not treacheries although you didn't have the stun minions cards come up ever um that i mean i had them but it was just like you're gonna play that you can play the thing that you can do something right now against the minions that are really right out. which it felt like oh eventually we get through the minions but we never did we never chewed through the minions we never chewed through the side schemes like we were literally fighting that battle the entire game so that happens um, though yeah because i i have like hand cannons and relentless assaults uh like the deck is definitely built around some decent minion management which is how it worked out in my right. play test um so like you know like you have looking for trouble but then you have the, the preps you know when it's working you have like line weight and both widow's bite to deal with the minion that comes in if you can't kill it you also then have hand cannon with overkill to then damage the boss and then you can you know combo that with either moment of triumph to then heal up so you don't have to necessarily flip and then, you know, once you get Sin Suit out, if you're triggering all that stuff, you can also then ready and then do more stuff, uh, defend and then ready. Um, and so you get into that nice flow, but, you know, never yeah. got there. So, by the way, thanks, ID Jester and uh, Wasteland, or no, Steven Johnson. They both said, unfortunately, you have to spend the resources. I think Brant said that as well. So thanks, everybody, for that. Wasteland Sniper says... Uh, 
Actually, I don't know what that was in reference to, so I will skip that comment for now. <laughs> uh id jester says the problem is you're not surviving right now i think you're wrong <laughs> the enemies are getting stronger while you just stay pat the extra card draws will end up killing you well yeah no we needed to get rid of that card draw earlier uh yep and then he's uh he uh said he told you yep that the card draw was killing us you were right uh brant says you needed hard knocks peter uh and id jester says the one problem i see with marvel champions is the deck power versus enemy setup power uh, if you get second, all right, everybody. I can hear you now. Um, Sorry about that. I think the stream cut out for like a little bit. Yeah, that was on me. So sorry about that. Hopefully everybody's back now. Um, yeah, no, I, my, my deck wasn't up to snuff. I, I think you can build really good Panther decks, but he takes a little while to build up. Now, 2-2-2 stat line with Retaliate's never bad, right? You can just not build around his Wakanda forever, which is what you did that one game. Um, with that stat line, he'd still be pretty good. But I do feel like he's very build-up dependent. He's a little slow. And, I mean, it's not even like we were playing against one of the newer scenarios where, where you have to be super fast. Uh, so, I feel like... Dude, when you get all those those hazard icons. Well, yeah. Yeah, I feel like Panther's fun, but I do think he's a little slow to be ultra competitive at the high end. Um, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I think we also got unlucky, right? Like drawing that many, I think hazard icons, uh, which are the plus card ones, I believe. Yeah. Versus no hazards, prices, hazards is... that can't thwart the main scheme. I forget what those call crisis. 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 Oh, you're right. Those are crisis. Never mind. You're right. Hazard. Uh, so I think like having hazard is you know, just puts you really on the back foot. So we didn't really get a chance. I, I think if those came later, we would have had more of a fighting chance. I don't, I don't know if we would have won, but we would have had a, definitely a better shot. Well, again, we just got so far behind the curve early when we had those three crisis or not crisis, um, you know, draw card draw icons up at one time. It's just, it, you can't dig yourself out of that. And that's why I said, I thought we were digging ourselves out of it because we were finally down to only one of those plus card draw cards. That's why I said, if we could just survive, I thought we had a chance. Of course, who knew the next turn you were going to draw one again. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's rough, man. It's rough. And I actually feel like, I hate to say this, it's, it's kind of a weird thing to say, but I feel like Shadows of the Past may have even helped us there because it added five extra cards to the deck. So we're not getting those crisis cards as frequently, which is kind of a weird thing to say, but I, I yeah, but I feel like those cards also put you really far in the hole on health, because that when that and then they also toughed all your minions, which made it terrible. <laughs> sure, yes, I forgot about that part of them. All right, so that was tough, but I, I mean, would you want to take it on again next week? But this time planning for it and. Uh, Doing a little Ant Man Wasp, I think, might have a better chance. They don't need as much build up. Uh, I think Wasp still needs some build up, but um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I think it'll be fun. Um, happy to try it again. Um, I mean, I, I, I think we could still even do it with these two heroes, um, but maybe, I don't know, maybe protection's not the right one with this much, or maybe aggression's not the right call here. Um, Definitely need a little more minion, minion management and, and thwarting, so. Yeah, well, I can worry about the minion management with Ant-Man. Um, Brant says, in this scenario, I think Panther just needs tactical genius and claws so that Wakanda can remove two threat and deal two for one cost. I certainly would have played my early game differently knowing this scenario, where, right? I didn't realize there was going to be as many minions as there were, and I didn't realize there were as many side schemes as there were, right? I definitely would have picked my cards differently earlier and done my setup differently earlier and i think you're right i think those two cards just two damage or one damage to every minion in front of somebody right that would have been good there just to plink off those toughs or those one extra damages we have guys with five health where we could do four pretty easily but the fifth one was the hard one so i think there were definitely better choices um but tactical genius do you think i definitely do you to. think if you played it again you would have not prioritized protection and gone with panther upgrades probably probably uh at least those two upgrades early right because that way for one cost 
you're doing a bunch of stuff. I think I messed up not getting enough Panther upgrades early because I did. I chose to put out my plus armor, my plus defense, all that stuff early because I was trying to get that going. And then I figured it'd be easy enough to get my Panther upgrades later. But no, I think I definitely should have gone Panther. See, so here's the problem. Like you want to do a Panther deck where you like perfectly pull out what you need. So in order to do that, you need a lot of cards in play. But when you're putting a lot of cards in play, then you're prioritizing what you're putting in play, right? So I wonder if I'm thinking about this the wrong way and a more event-based or event-focused strategy would be better for Panther, if that makes sense. And that way, you're always prioritizing putting the, the right four cards into play. And then when you get a Wakanda Forever, it's such a cheap expenditure to get such big bang for your buck with Panther that like... It's just pretty good. And then if you have other events, you could play along with it even better, right? But that way you're always getting events. You're always getting something useful coming up. I feel like now I was having to choose which upgrades to put in. And so, and I feel like it's hard to upgrade both paths simultaneously because upgrade cards are just more expensive. I mean, you say that, but like most of your upgrades are cost one. Well, yes, that is true. But it's still... I, had, I mean, it's still two cards out of your hand, right? Like, we, we've yeah. talked about cost one before. Cost one's really not one cost. It's two cards out of your five-card hand. Cost two yeah. three cards out of your five-cost hand. Cost, you know, four is I, all five I, of your cards. I almost wonder, like, you just do the basic package uh, where you do the power in all of us, you get the allies uh, out, but then you put in, like, kind of the resource cards to kind of help you draw more and also... Uh, kind of make it so you can just play more cards out of your hand i, I wonder if that's not the right way to go uh basic package including uh, of course lockjaw i'll tell you which card should not have been in my deck one card black widow black widow <laughs> should definitely not have been in this deck obviously because then you don't feel bad like like i almost never feel bad spending a double resource on a wakanda forever when you're you have like two upgrades out right like it's still worth it oh yeah um and at the point that you're, you've thinned your deck down, like it, you almost, it doesn't matter, right? It's like, whatever. Uh, but having those double resource, like if you actually have seven, like there's a good chance you can put out like a helicarrier or a, you know. Or a uh, um, um, mansion, mansion so you can draw cards faster, right? So that's another yeah. way to, so it's like to deal with it. three and alter ego feels good. So ID Jester says, um, just continuing his point from earlier, when they're about equal, the game is fun. But if either the villain deck is power is too high or too low compared to your deck, then the game is nothing but a slog. I do agree that it's more of a slog when the villain deck is too high. Certainly if the hero deck's too high, forget it, right? It's not a slog. It's, 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 a, it's a massacre and it's quick. Um, but you and I tend to play more slugs. Uh, I think you like that um, feeling you're behind a little bit from the beginning. And well, you're trying I, to work your way. Yeah, out I mean, I, I feel like um, if you don't have that, then you like you can play a good amount of cards in champions, like on a player's turn. Like it, it if you don't, if you're not like I, you know, it's like the Green Goblin uh, mutagen formula strategy, right? Like. They purposely put you behind because that's the fun and challenge. Right. Uh, but some people don't like that. That style of game. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing you and I have talked about in the past, and it's certainly something I've talked about with Mike. So Mike's coming over tomorrow. For those of you who don't know Mike, just watch the non-streaming channel. He's the main person that does the playthroughs over there. There's certainly a lot of them over there, Colin, uh, Barrett, but Mike does all the reviews. So he's the face you see most often, I guess. But here's the thing he doesn't like that he doesn't want to slog at all he wants it to be easy he wants you to build a super powerful character almost like a speed run every time he plays right he just wants to get through the campaign whereas i know you on the other hand like it to be very challenging the whole time lots of pressure lots of pressure oh my god i can't believe we pulled that out right and that's part of the reason i said i felt like we were getting close to pulling it out because it kind of felt like we were getting there. We just had that one more card to get rid of. If we could have just survived long enough to get rid of that last extra card draw, I felt like we had a good chance. But, like, that's the great part about Marvel Champions. I think everybody's going to play the game differently. You look at Steve with Beat the Game and the way he does his streams. You look at Brent and the way he does his streams. And you look at the way we do our streams. We all play... Do, do you personally not say what his channel is? Oh, 
Step into the portal. I got it. <laughs> yes. So you look at Brant. Thank you, Brant, for being here. Step into the portal. Everybody knows who he is. They know I mess it up every time. It's not welcome to the portal. It's step into the portal. I promise I owe you about 500 of those, Brant. Sorry about that. But um, so they play very differently than we do, right? They're not going against the big challenges. They're doing things like speed runs or messing with the decks and doing different stuff. They don't have these super long, you know, in-depth fights that we do. But but that's okay. It's it's okay for different people to like different things in the game. Um, our game, but I mean, I also think they do that stuff off stream. They just don't. They're just trying to come up with fresh content too. Well, sure. I mean, if you're not streaming, you certainly aren't answering questions, so you don't have a <laughs> the the time that that takes. I mean, we finished this game in two hours with talking to everybody in the stream, so stopping several times. And certainly, if you can edit afterward, we saw today at a half an hour play and an hour long play, you can certainly get those plays down. Um, if you're editing afterward but the point being we're all looking for different things and i think you and i tend to go for more difficult stuff which raises the bar very high and it feels like we're always under the gun um and the nice part for me is i like playing it all the ways and that's the one of the greatest parts about the game i think is you can play it however you want you could play it with standard difficulty with standard villains you know pre-con villain or heroes if you want Right, like there's just so many different ways that you can go at playing Marvel Champions, and I think that's where the excitement is, and I think that's why a lot of people love the game. Yeah, I think they took a lot of that feedback from I think Lord of the Rings, how it didn't have that variability when it started, uh, and they realized it's just really hard to design for all the different audiences. Uh, and so I think with Arkham, uh, they had the chaos bag with kind of the different token distributions of a lot of different difficulty levels and. Um, I think they actually got a lot of pushback early on in Marvel of it not being hard enough, you know? Um, yeah. And, well, Galaxy's uh, Most Wanted, took no, that nobody's complaining about that now. <laughs> that is for sure. Uh, yeah, and then you got the Hood Pack, right? Snare Pack, they've showed off some cards um, in that, and then they had those uh, Standard 2 and Expert 2, which uh, I guess made this a good segue into some of the announcement stuff happening this week, but... Uh, there was a uh, well. Hold on. Design... Let's, let's, uh, we'll, we'll get into that in one minute. Uh, but Stephen Johnson uh, agrees with uh, with us a little bit. He says, "To me, though, I enjoy the challenge of digging out of a hole." He also says, "I felt like if I were able to win this one, or if they were able to win this one, the victory would have felt even better for them, and it would have." I mean, if you remember, I don't even remember who we're playing against, but that turn one, Shadows of the Past, and Ronin coming out, and we won that game. Like, that was probably the most epic game of champions I've ever played, right? Like, we were just like, I was ready to fold it up on turn three or, or earlier. <laughs> and, and the fact that we could pull it out, like, I was so pumped after that game. It was just, you know, it's just a great feeling. Yeah, well, we've actually had a lot of, I, I wouldn't say like a lot, a lot, but it's definitely been a handful of times when you've definitely said, should we just restart like right. it's early enough that we could get another game in and i'm just like let's do another turn and then it turns another turn in uh sometimes you sometimes it works out and there's games like tonight or it doesn't right yeah yeah and uh so brant says panther only really needs two of the four upgrades until end game uh dan says i love how panther and iron man need to build up to get going and they do feel very different it's interesting that they're both in the core set right because they haven't had another well i guess ironically we said quicksilver needs a lot of build up too um but i i actually think a, a lot of heroes need a decent amount of build up to get going yeah venom um, venom definitely needs a couple guns out before he feels really like where you want him to be um so yeah uh, but Dan also says it's really dependent on the card draw order, but it's uh, so much fun when you get that engine roaring. And that's part of the benefit, I guess, for some people who just want to play standard and just kind of smack down the game a little bit. You can get that engine going. It's You're not as card draw dependent, right? Um, so I, I think there's pros to both halves of things for sure. Uh, doo -doo -doo. All right, so there's yeah, definitely yeah. a lot of uh chat out here um a lot about panther and wakanda forever and things like that um but 
We got uh, ID Jester. I do agree with your point about different players playing Marvel Champions different ways and with different difficulty levels. I enjoy playing on easy mode with only a slight challenge. And yeah, that's exactly where Mike is, and I get it. And I think that's part of the reason Jerry doesn't like the game either. I think he feels like it's a slog when we play. So instead of playing expert with those guys, I'm definitely going to always play standard, not pre-constructed decks. We'll build our own decks and we'll just murderate it. And then when they get tired of murdering it, then maybe we'll, you know, start raising the difficulty slowly but surely. But I, I think introducing new players to that game, that feeling of being a powerful superhero, you don't always get that in Marvel Champions when you're going against the hardest stuff. I think feeling like a superhero means that you're just murdering things left and right, right? And so it's they're also called super villains on the other side. Well, sure. Sure, but I, I do think you feel more powerful yeah. when you're playing against standard difficulty. And I do think for I mean, yeah. introducing people to the game, that's a much better way to go. And that is something that I had to learn myself through trial and error. Um, uh, yeah, Stephen Johnson says Black Widow needs to set up two. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, when you get those three cards, you're right. Widow is feels much different. Uh, and ID Jester says, a great conversation, guys. Uh, thanks for sharing. Well, thanks for uh, joining us because, again, I don't think I've seen you before. I know we got a lot of new uh, listeners and viewers today with those two new um, playthroughs coming out, a lot of people coming from the non streaming channel over. So we appreciate it. Uh, you know, we appreciate all the conversation. This is what we like to do here. Every Friday night, we're playing, except for next Friday, we'll be playing next Thursday because uh, <laughs> uh, I can't do next Friday. For real this time. For real this time. Sorry, I messed up the schedule this week. All right, so you were get, about to get into the announcement though, and the um, and you know yeah, what came out yeah, from Fantasy Flight this week. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so there, I guess there's two things. Um, uh, they announced the Valkyrie pack. Uh, I assume you didn't look at it because that's classic. Uh, you don't want to kind of ruin your first impressions. Well, right. But do you want yeah, to talk I mean, about it all? As, as we saw with the videos today, it's not easy for me to be as excited as I am if I already know what's in the pack. So, no, I have not looked at what's in Valkyrie. So, uh, But, like, are you just going to forget everything is delayed so much? Like, I mean, I, probably not, though. Like, about that. like, I was super excited to see Venom... Like, I don't know Venom as somebody as a gun-toting, like, shooting guy, right? Like, I would have remembered some of those cards because they're very memorable. You know what I mean? And and it wouldn't have been as exciting for me when I drew them for the first time. So, no, I, I like to play when I get a new deck. I know you refuse to play anything on Tabletop Simulator before you play it in real life. When I get a new deck, I just want to shuffle it up and see how it comes out and see what's in there. And, you know, I don't care if I'm going to lose or not. Now, I typically play against st uh, standard difficulty, so I probably won't lose, even, you know, if bad card draw. So um, I, I do set it up so it's a nice, fun, easier game. But at the same time, I do want to get excited as I'm drawing those cards for the first time and, and kind of seeing what's in there. Um, but, yeah, they, they announced... Uh... In the new hero pack, uh, who knows when that will come out? I guess at this point, with some of the shipping stuff, I don't uh, get why they announced stuff so early, though. Like we, uh, I, I think it's just to have that constant, like you know, it's it is a lifestyle game, and people, uh, like I, I, in the other, in the main Marvel Discord, people are like, basically, even though I feel like Mad Titan has all been spoiled, uh, not too soon. They're just like, when it, when are they announcing the next hero pack? Like, but that's uh, my point. People are just excited to always be talking and, and thinking about it but you'd still be doing that if you got the information just as it released right or just before it released if they spoiled it like a week earlier or whatever else rather than months and months early it feels well because like, they want people to pre-order it off their site i guess that's and kind the benefit. of yeah. and, and it also gives content for like uh content creators to talk about it because they never spoil the entire pack right they only spoil a few key cards and I know for me, I love actually reading that stuff because uh, I think I'm sad a little bit that you don't like to because we could get into some of that stuff for both like the deck building of like, there's some really interesting cards in this pack. Uh, and then, uh, you know, like this isn't spoiler at all, but it's just like it to me, I'm still impressed that like each hero has a unique mechanic that they're not like, you know, you talk about Black Panther and Iron Man in the core set, both having upgrades, but feeling very distinct. Like, oh, they definitely you know, do. Valkyrie does Valkyrie doesn't feel like any other hero, you know, like she has a shtick that is very unique to her, which is really cool to see that we're over 20 heroes in 
and they are not repeating at least for hero design like anything yet well but we can talk about the two that i did play today right in on the stream met uh and we can talk about because you've looked at their mechanics so that's what i'm saying we don't have to talk about the next thing we can talk about the thing that just came out right <laughs> like we don't have to talk about the thing that's happening in two three months that we can't even play yet uh I, although to be fair mad titan shadow is not available <laughs> readily for everybody at this point yeah, and, and 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 I have not played it, but yes, I have looked at the but cards. But you've looked I've at looked the cards at least, stuff. so we can kind of talk about yeah. what you think it feels like, and I can talk about what I've experienced, and I've only played with the starter decks, right? So I've never deck built for them, so it's still a projection. You know what I mean? Uh, so Dan says, Peter, you don't even read the cards before the game for your new hero when you open it? No, I do not. I shuffle up, and I just go. I draw my hand, and I see what it feels like. And if you want to see, like I've done all of them live here, on the streaming channel a lot of times i do it live this time it wasn't because i didn't think i'd be around to do it live um so i just had some time and i recorded them ahead of time but no i i literally just draw the cards and see what it's like and it is same with new scenarios every time i play a campaign when i play when uh galaxy's most wanted cam campaign came out i literally took groot because that's the one i wanted to play with i shuffled them up i took the first scenario i set it up and i just played it on standard and I tried to play through the whole thing on standard. Now, it didn't work out very well for me. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's how I prefer to do it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I pasted the the link to the new pack uh, if you hadn't seen it. But it's if it, it just go to the Fancy Flight website, it's, I think, the second news thing. Uh, so it'll be pretty easy to find. Um, but, yeah, uh, I, I saw the thing. I'm pretty excited for it. Uh, another aggression precon kind of thing which makes sense for a a warrior yes. hero <laughs> uh so yeah i mean i think it'll be fun to play her and thor together uh get that asgard theme going you know well yeah it gives uh, us another team up oh i wonder if they'll have a team up card in there don't spoil it don't tell me but that'd be cool they haven't uh, done team up since rocket and groot and, and, and wasp and uh what was it um quicksilver and and wanda scarlet witch yeah, Scarlet Witch. Yeah. Uh, I will spoil that they did not spoil one. Oh, okay. So, uh, But it'd be cool. Uh, it'd be something to think about. All right, Fantasy Flight, throw it in there. If you haven't made it yet, throw it in there. <laughs> you you um, have some time. Yeah, you know, it brings back... Uh, there's a lot of Asgard-traded stuff, so it brings back um, inner signature set. So I, I think uh, team-building exercise is back on the table. is a probably really good card for her. Nice. Um, also, you know, just more I, I think this this cycle seems to be a mix of both guardian and avenger stuff so uh this is filling out some more avengers um stuff so you say uh, filling you out know, more avengers stuff i feel like avengers is the most filled out thing we have by far yeah yeah i mean it's like the dwarves and lord of the rings um but like you know they're it just like a Aven being avenger trade is very valuable similar to how being a dwarf is very valuable in lord of the rings um but the it, it just also just makes team building really good right because just like well i can throw <laughs> My hero is Avenger traded. That means I any like Avenger ally becomes one cost less. Like, yeah, uh, I don't know if they so did that like on that. purpose, but it feels because you get that you get Avengers Tower. Now you're getting two discount on allies. That's when it becomes silly, right? And it's not like either of those upgrades are very expensive. They're two cost each, so you get both of them in play, and now you're playing allies for one or two that should cost three or four. And the Avenger allies, especially in leadership, some of them are super cheap. They're one or two anyway. So you don't even need those extra cards in addition, right? You're getting free allies in addition to whatever else you're doing. I don't know. that. That's my biggest problem, I think, with leadership and with the Avenger stuff is it's... Allies are super good in the game. We know that. And to make them... To make team building exercise work so well with that and Avengers Tower work so well with that... well. Avengers Tower, that's all it does, at least. Team building can do that and other stuff. So, I don't know. That's my only big negative with, with the Avengers and especially some of the cheaper Avenger heroes. Uh, Steven Johnson pointed out, make sure not to run the Valkyrie ally when your partner is playing her. I mean, look. Uh, cough, Black Widow, Next cough. week, I I'm going to have... I, I guarantee I'm going to have Wasp in my deck next week. Guaranteed. Well, isn't it... Isn't it yeah, isn't it part of the... Yeah, it's my signature ally. I mean, it's just what I do. It's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. Yes. 
Yes. No, I, 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 that was so stupid this week. But, you know, you get into building a protection deck. I'm like, oh, yeah, I definitely want Widow in my protection deck. <laughs> like, didn't even think about it. Well, I mean, you could you could have done what Branton and been like, uh, I am replacing this with a useful card. Well, but the bottom line is and, it's still a resource, right? When I had her, I yeah. didn't need a different card. It was fine to use her as a resource, and I'm okay with that. I, I definitely think if I was to play a tournament or whatever else, I think the most fun way to play Marvel Champions, maybe this is what they should do in future campaigns, right? Rather than making you stick with a static deck or giving you freedom to change to whatever you want between missions, I think a sideboard would be fun. And it doesn't have to be a big one, maybe 10 cards. You know what I mean? Like a 10 card sideboard and your deck. And it's like, oh, I'm playing with Black Widow today. Well, guess what? I'm going to not use my uh whatever so i think that would be kind of a fun way to go yeah i'm actually kind of sad that um marvel cdb and i think both arkham don't well i guess it makes sense for arkham because it's not part of the thing and i guess marvel cd is based on off of arkham db uh because it actually costs you xp to you know change cards and in arkham but uh a feature that i use in rings db a lot for lord of the rings is well you can have a sideboard yeah uh with your deck and i think in marvel that would definitely be a thing that i i I do when i bring cards physically in person right is that you know like you would replace that either like substitute allies or just like oh this is a minion heavy event so maybe i'm gonna put some more whatever events or i i need more ability to you know do whatever i think would make a lot of sense um yeah Yeah. all right Uh, so we talked about Anything else come out of that um, chat on Wednesday with uh, the designers? Yeah, so I was going to mention the chat as kind of the next thing. So there was a chat that uh, happened with the designers on Wednesday. Uh, I think it's about 45 minutes or so. Uh, it's up on YouTube uh, if you want to look it up. Uh, I saw the beginning, there. but then they just started talking about cards, right? <laughs> yeah, that was basically the whole thing. They were just talking about cards, and then, and then it was, there was Q&A at the end. Um, the cards thing so wasn't ex- as exciting as I was hoping. I, the, the major announcement, they, they didn't hold it for the end, though. It was very interesting when they talked about Mad Titan Shadow and when the release date was going to be, right? Well, I mean, just everyone's going to ask, right? So you might as well just uh, get it out of the way so you can talk about what you actually want to talk about, right? Right. But my favorite thing is they go, Mad Titan Shadow, it'll be out by the end of the year. Hopefully. <laughs> It's like, yeah. oh, wow. We went from well, no, everybody expecting it to goal. end of the year. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I also have to imagine so much of it is like everything else on like the Kickstarter stuff uh, as well that I've been getting updates for various games. Like so much is out of their hands, right? Yeah, like, of course. I, They probably have no idea. And like, I'm sure they're not even getting great updates and, and they have to distribute worldwide, which sounds like a nightmare. So, Well, and it is obviously uh, because obviously it's come out in some places right and not in other places yeah. so i mean yeah. now you've got and i mean i guess australians have always had this where they get it months later you know where they're yeah some like, of them uh, haven't even gotten galaxy's most wanted yet right yeah they're saying they don't have like venom and uh drax or whatever in some places of the world so yeah so I mean, we're a little spoiled for choice here normally, but it is weird that they're not doing worldwide releases, but I guess most of Marvel Champions has come out during a pandemic, so I don't know if that's true for their other LCGs or not, but it does seem weird that they don't just have like release dates and just make sure the product's in far enough ahead of time where they don't got to worry about it. Yeah, that's been a common complaint with, uh, I think, just their LCG product line as a whole, but I'm sure it's not unique to it, um, but it matters a lot when especially the competitive LCGs, as one could imagine, sure. even more so, uh, that that consistency problem has been a big deal. Uh, well, and, and that's also, probably why they don't have competitive LCGs anymore. Yeah. Um, well, that and, like, I assume, especially because of the pandemic, who's playing in person and competing in tournaments, like, if you can't have that community. Well, part of the problem uh, that can be- with LCG format is net decking, right? Like, you can easily, in games like I mean, Magic the Gathering... How, how is that... How is that any different from any CCG? You just you just have the singles market, like all the. Well, that's true. like, I I feel like in Magic there's like the three decks that are meta, and everyone just buys singles 
to build that deck if you want to compete at that level. Sure, but at least so, in Magic, the meta changes. Uh, maybe the biggest problem they've had with their LCG format is they didn't do, they don't cycle where older stuff gets cycled out because the meta constantly changes in stuff like Magic as things cycle out and new things cycle in, right? Whereas if you're just adding more and more, that means everything you add in either has to be more powerful than the old stuff you had or why would anybody buy it? Not everything, but... Well, it doesn't have to be more powerful. It potentially just has to subvert the existing meta. Sure. Right. So or, if... or change it up enough where like, you, like there are new cards and you have to take them into account. Um, they, they started doing that with... Um, I forget. They definitely started looking into that for like, I think... Netrunner, they had... Well, they'd start doing draft, but then I think they started looking at cycling. But it's kind of tough in LCGs because, like, you don't want cards that you bought to basically go out. Um, but that's just kind of the standard. In well, I mean, but that's CCGs. standard in all these other games, right? I mean, the LCG was supposed to break away from that. But I think the big thing that'll solve it is drafting. And I know that's something you've played around a little bit with. Um, I don't know if you're ready to, to talk about that now, but even in Marvel... I think it's kind of interesting to maybe think about drafting at some point and making that a different format. And like we said, Marvel's got so much stuff that you can play with as far as like different sets of stuff, different cards, different whatever. Some people want to play standard, some want to play expert, different difficulty levels, different encounters. So I think there's lots of ways you can go. And certainly one of my favorite formats in a lot of games is a draft format so that's certainly something we could work toward as well in the marvel community and i know i've kind of play tested something you were working on um it's not quite ready for prime time but i i think it'll be fun yeah i think uh drafting will be really cool in marvel champions because you at least start out with a good 15 core yep. set of cards and then the different difficulty levels too right like uh draft decks aren't expected to be good so you can always just lower the difficulty to standard right yeah um and or like have the easier modulars or you know um what have you and so i i think that'll be a really fun format in marvel champions where you won't feel bad playing like it's it's not that there's anything wrong with playing standard but i feel like when you're used to playing expert it feels like a it feels very different going back down to standard um sure uh difficulty but um you know oftentimes as well like i'm bringing uh simply more powerful decks uh but when you're drafting you, you got to pick between some sometimes some pretty bad choices well and i think uh, and people can just draft at home right now right they just shuffle up yeah. all their hero cards pick one at random or pick three and choose one to pick from or four or whatever they want to do and then you shuffle up all your aggression cards if you want to do an aggression deck you shuffle them with all your neutral cards you draw three at a time four at a time whatever you want to do or you could draw three aggression and one neutral however you want to do it and uh just start building your deck until you get to your 40 cards so i mean there are many ways to do it i think people could do it at home just with their cards the program you're putting together makes it a lot easier but then you got to set your deck up afterward also. I think there's definitely different ways to do it for sure. Yeah, yeah. So the thing Peter's talking about is a, a website that I've been working on. Um, uh, it's been discussed in, I think, the Marvel Champions Discord a bit. Uh, and so, yeah, the idea is that you'll be able to draft heroes or pick a hero and then kind of be able to draft. Uh, and I've gotten some feedback, so I want to kind of uh, roll some things into it before uh, making it public, uh, but also uh, working on some design stuff too, so it looks less ugly. Well, um, and and some of the nice parts about it is, if you wanted to, you could put in rules, right? Like, you know, if you have if you don't have an ally in your deck yet, well, guess what? Maybe you're getting three allies at some point or something like that, just so it's not completely random. Um, you know, you could do things like that if you wanted. You don't have to, though, right? Like, you can kind of do yeah. whatever you want. Whereas if somebody's drafting out of their cards at home, that's something they couldn't do as easily. Yeah, I, I know some of the feedback I've gotten, for instance, is like not for it to be purely random. So, um, for instance, like I, I think I'm moving to a model where you can get three aspect cards and one neutral. Um, and that's kind of the flop. Yep. Uh, so, uh, and then no repeats in the selection too. Uh, and then also need to figure out how to manually get the like guardian and avenger specific cards but like 
you won't you won't if you pick a garden here you won't get adventure cards in your card pool either and vice versa um so a few improvements there um but that'll make it a little better um and then uh you know the goal one day which is not going to be when it goes public but hopefully you'll be able to export into marvel cv at some point um but yeah. which would be great um i mean it's still good now like you get a list of cards so i mean yeah i mean anyway all right so we've gone a little bit off the board there let's get back a little bit sorry that was that was my uh <laughs> that was me taking this off uh off channel uh, i knew you weren't ready to talk, so, talk about that yet but do we want to start uh, talking um about the interview a little bit you you mentioned the interview uh did we, oh yeah did yeah let's finish it up it? yeah what else so and yeah so so they mostly so the first the majority of it was them uh basically like they picked their favorite car like I think they just had uh, Boggs uh, and Caleb pick their favorite cards. At, out of uh, the two they, expansions, right? One was out of... Well, well, for, for Boggs, I think it was basically most of Galaxy's Most Wanted That's what it felt and like, some yeah. of this new cycle. Because he does mention... He did like show off some new cards, actually, uh, from the Hood scenario pack. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm really excited about that. So everything he showed off from the Hood, obviously, is going to be you know encounter stuff. So they weren't just sticking to hero cards, which was kind of cool. Um, but he showed off uh, kind of the Beastie Boys modular set, which is a bunch of like, uh, you know, like humanoid animals. And it seems to be built a lot around status effects. Uh, and so uh, like one of the, I believe, mi minions that you get uh, when he comes into play, the one revealed effect stuns every character in play and then or confuses every character in play. And then like the amount of... Uh, you know, there's an X value where it's like the number of characters uh, that are confused or whatever, okay. right? So, uh, you know, just very different kind of uh, look for that kind of stuff around status effects and things. And, uh, you know, they look like a lot of fun, right? You can imagine throwing that into even the claw we play today, which it would have minions, but it'd just be a very different kind of, you know, take on that. Um, sure. Although I don't know that it's fun team. to be stunned the entire game it makes med team better. Well, it's only one, it's only one minion that does it. Right. right. So it's like each of the minions kind of do different things sure. um, that come out and you only show Kai's room. Then there's side schemes that then, you know, like I think uh, if, if you're already confused, it will do damage to you or whatever. Right. So yeah. Um, things like that. So, I mean, that looks fun. And I, I think, you know, all the hood stuff will just be really cool because I think they're throwing in a ton on a really neat modular so i think that's just gonna add a lot of variety almost feels like if you're a veteran player it's kind of a must pick yeah must no pick I, I, that feels exactly um, like what it is the hood uh expansion seems like something like okay you think it's too easy still or you want to beef up some of your easier scenarios look we just proved today we can make claw hard so <laughs> um you know there's definitely ways to do it um but this will just give you more ways to do it right which is kind of cool yeah, uh, some other car. So they like some of the neat stuff. I I, I love listening to designer interviews, um, just because it's neat to sometimes just hear the backstory of a lot of like how things are created, and I'm a sucker for that. Um, so I love listening to all these things. But one of the really neat ones that maybe you'd appreciate, Peter, was uh, they were talking about uh, Blue Marvel, who is in you know the Spectrum signature set, right? Yeah. So do we want to like, throw up a spoiler alert now? I guess. Uh, at this yeah. point so if you don't want to hear about any spoilers for uh, Mad Titan Shadow or anything beyond that we're going to get into Mad Titan Shadow now because um, yeah I have something to say about that <laughs> actually based on my play today um, sure so yeah let's um, go ahead and just put up a spoiler wall now anything we talk about now will just be mostly Mad Titan Shadow I think we should keep the conversation focused there because that's coming out or out for some people some people are obviously getting it in from europe so um that's at least something you can get and play shortly but yeah go ahead talk about blue uh what was his name blue blue marvel marvel i think blue marvel so he lets you change forms as spectrum and on his card it doesn't yeah. say may change forms it says when he comes into play spectrum changes forms or something along those lines is the wording so during my play I actually would have won if I didn't change forms and or if and or had I looked ahead of time and seen that that's what he made you do. But I changed forms and it ended up not being able to defeat the villain because of that. Now, somebody who watched the play said I didn't have to change forms. It's not a forced response. So I didn't have to do it, which 
Is it is it just does it just say response? I think so. I don't have the card in front of me. Yeah, response. Anything that says response is optional. Okay. Um, I mean, I haven't played with the card, so I don't know it them off the top of my head very well. Uh, but let me look it up real quick. Blue Marvel is a hero response, so it is optional. So you do not have to trigger anything that is a response unless it's a. Force. Okay, so I played an entire another round because of that. I had it down to one health, but if I didn't have to switch off my attack form, I would have been able to do enough damage to defeat him um nice uh that you learned something <laughs> you know what uh, i learned a lot from these first plays that that's the only negative of opening up a deck and playing it right away is you don't get all this nuance out of the way ahead of time you just kind of have to learn the wrong the, the hard way like uh blade yeah. is another hero or another ally that comes with it and i didn't realize it said you have to discard a, a fist resource from your hand and I was using one of my cards that gave me a fist resource to pay for him every turn. Now, would it have mattered? Probably not. And then I also didn't realize that Blade didn't take consequential damage because I wasn't paying attention. Um, so Blade can stay out forever until you don't have a fist in your hand, I guess. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, like Caleb basically went and explained why, like the backstory behind like uh, apparently he didn't even really know blue marble that well uh i think coming into right. it uh and he kind of explained that he's this guy that helped out spectrum when she was having problems uh and formed a relationship with her in the comic and like her powers were overloaded and she was i mean able to regain control and then he like worked his magic to kind of help her uh be able to like control that stuff again which is why he has that ability to change forms in the game which was kind of neat to uh I always enjoy how much uh, it doesn't always happen, but like when you know, like the theme seeps into the actual mechanics, yep, and it makes sense. And so it was neat to kind of hear that backstory. Well, it was interesting that uh, Scarlet Witch that. came out right as WandaVision was out, and I don't want to spoil anything from that, but there was definitely, well, I'll just say her signature ally was in the WandaVision show, but it's a very it brought into play in a very different I, light. I think it's it's a support, not even an ally, right? Is it a support? Yeah, I thought it was an ally, yeah. but you're right. No, you're right. It's a support card. And you were telling me, because I hadn't seen the WandaVision finale or second to last or whatever it was, episode. Like, and they're like, you were like, huh. Well, that's different. Because, <laughs> you know, we we had her as an ally of uh, of Scarlet Witch in that, in, in Marvel Champions. And not so much in WandaVision. So it, it was interesting to see, well, maybe there's more story there that we just don't know about that is going to come out in future either episodes of WandaVision or whatever else. So it, it's neat, though, like you're saying, that how they're integrating the theme into the me mechanisms of the game. Yeah, and I mean, I guess to like kind of talk to that point a little bit, they are basing most uh, everything it's based in the comics and i think when they kind of touch on the mcu it's more uh a throw or kind of nod to that stuff more than them really basing stuff off of the mcu there um the comics are definitely kind of the source yes of that, but so. uh, let's be honest the stuff they're releasing is all mcu stuff for the most part i mean venom being an exception right, right but like but like but they're ba they're basing they're basing even with that stuff stuff off of the comic source material, not necessarily. Sure. Like it's not like an MCU Iron Man, right? Necessarily. But what they're doing is they're releasing stuff that they know people want to buy because of the MCU. How about that? Oh yeah, I mean that that's just free marketing. Well, of course. And, and they've said they definitely have said like they have no problems <laughs> capitalizing on that. Of course. And why, uh, and why should they? But, you know, they, they also pick out... They also pick characters, I think, as well, that they're throwing in. Like, the hood is not the MCU, right? And, like like you said, Venom. Um, most people know Eddie Brock Venom, but, you know, they picked Agent Venom. That was actually one of the questions. They picked Agent Venom because he was actually part of the Guardians of the Galaxy, and they wanted a hero that had more gun guns to kind of fill out the gun stuff. Yeah, they needed more um, guns, and it worked out well. Like, I, I like Agent Venom a lot. Um so did you want to talk at all about the two new heroes that came in Mad Titan Shadow, or do you just kind of want to call it a night? Oh, uh, we can if you want. Uh, I mean, most I, I've not played it, so 
I probably have limited things I can say. Um, but, well, I'll just say, I mean, um, if you watch the videos, Spectrum is all about switching forms. Whenever she switches forms, so she she has one 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 stat line, so very basic stat line, but she has one form that gives her plus two attack. When you switch that form, you do one damage to something. She has one form that gives her plus two thwart. When she switches that form, she gets um, she thwarts something, and she has one that gives her plus two defense. And I think that one heals an ally or heals herself. I can't remember. There is something that heals allies in her deck as well. Um, I think the thing that heals allies is the resource card. Yeah, right? that's right. The special resource card. Yeah. So, yeah, that's another cool thing that they came up with these special resources, which, you know, if you're using a... It's only a one wild resource, but it does something based on if it's justice, it thwarts one if it's whatever it if it's aggression it does one damage so it's kind of neat what they did with those resources they definitely give you choices like do you put that card in which is basically a nothing card no i i feel like i feel like only the leadership one is good and every other one feels worse well that's true of everything right leadership so what is the leadership heal and ally one yeah, no. It, this card generates, this card generates a resource for each ally you have up to a maximum of three. Is the one. Oh my god! Yeah, together. that was ridiculous. Where the other ones like, re, like it's a justice resource, and then you get to remove one threat off the main scheme. Like you'd rather see a power justice most of the time, or sure. the aggression one is deal one damage to the villain instead. Okay. Well, it is a wild resource, uh, though, right? There, There is some inherent benefit to that. Um, sure. But so is power of leadership, justice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which... Protection. Yeah, there, there, there also is in Adam Warlock's deck, it has the, in a, the card you're probably thinking of, it, it is a uh, heal of damage from an ally. But even that is, like, really good, right? Because, like, if you get to do an, use an ally one more time... That could actually be really good. Absolutely, uh, I think that's a protection one. I'm guessing. No, no, that's the that's the leadership one. Oh, that is the leadership. Two leadership. One. Yeah, the protection one I think is just heal uh, a hero. Okay. Yeah. So bottom line is, well, I was just going through spectrum stuff. So spectrum's kind of interesting because she just wants to change forms, and her cards allow her to change forms. And the cool part is the defensive one lets her change forms when she's on defense too. It's an interrupt, uh, which is kind of cool. Because I was like, well, wait a minute. When are you going to ever pick defense? And you're typically not. But it's nice that you can switch to that defensive form um, with that card play, you know, in the on the defensive phase. So she's got some kind of neat stuff where she switches a lot. So she'd also be good potentially with cards that when you switch to a new hero form or whatever, you get something kind of like those Ant-Man and Wasp cards what, as they switch between hero forms. I think she would be good for cards like that as well because she does switch a lot and potentially even two or three times on a turn. Yeah, and it, it does count um, uh, in the rulings. Uh, that does count as switching, like like flipping your hero over. Um, but it is not limited to once a turn, like you're saying here, which yeah. I think is a and Ant Man and Wasp did that a lot that too, stuff. right? Because they would no, but they are they are limited though because it is like. Like, like you, it like the what's interesting is that she has changed forms like Ant-Man and Wasp, like you're saying, but theirs is built around still like the kind of hero mechanic of it, like alter ego. Like I think you're gonna giant, realize I mean, after playing it that it feels very similar to the way they do it. It actually feels like a worse version of it because she can't switch between forms, uh, without those cards. Whereas Ant-Man and Wasp. They can switch to one form, then play the card that switches them to the other form. Does that make sense? Whereas for her, yeah, yeah, she can't I, do anything. Control, but I think that's with, I think that's by design. Well, sure. Um, and I think I think it like also, uh, you know, like I, I think she's not supposed to feel like Ant Man, like Ant Man next, right? Like like this is just another the same mechanic even though they're using a similar mechanic. She feels, um, if she feels like anybody, it's one of those. But I feel like those two feel very different and distinct in their forms, and you kind of want to build up one or the other. Whereas with her, the benefit for her is her flexibility. Like, she can be good at attacking, thwarting, and 
Uh, I, I guess Groot had a little bit of that too, where he could use his counters for whatever. So she has a little bit of that flexibility, which felt nice about her. And you don't have to pick one or the other. And man, that attack card, I think it did like seven damage and switches her to attack form, which gives another one damage. And then she now has three attack. So that was like super good. <laughs> like, And I think she had three of them in her deck, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, she has three Gamma Blasts. Which is in her deck. a three cost card, which is not inexpensive, but it's 11 damage minimum, right? Because the seven plus the one plus her three attack now. So, I mean, 11 damage on a turn is nothing to sneeze at but it doesn't it doesn't ready her right so if you're no. exhausted and you played it i think there are other cards it, it would it would just be the seven plus the one for the form flip right but i mean you're probably going to be ready right i mean even still even eight without the attack right it's still pretty good yeah i mean that's what swing web kick is right right but the benefit for her is it changes her into that attacky form also so she gives her more flexibility because again she can't just change that form if she wants to and if she was already in that form it gives her overkill so um it's it's not a dead card if she's already in that form which is the nice part yeah i mean i I think it's interesting too that uh um, because she, you can, you can control her form flip over the course of two turns by flipping down. Right? Of course. So there you go. Um, so you have at least that level of control. Like when you flip to hero mode, you get to pick which form, right? Yeah, well, if you saw the play, it's only 30 minutes. So <laughs> you, you probably can guess that there wasn't much flipping down. Uh, in fact, it was not meaning for it to be a speed run, but her deck was kind of so good. And those 11 damage cards were just, I mean, I, destroyed the the villain and she's a leadership deck too right so i probably should have played against expert but i played the first scenario with her uh and her leadership deck and i just kind of destroyed it pretty quickly so um she definitely felt powerful but i was also playing against a level one campaign scenario right so it's hard it was hard to get a good feel for how powerful she actually is because you know i don't know how hard that scenario is versus other scenarios either yeah, uh, I'm really excited for Ray to rumble um, uh, for like an Ant Man deck. Yeah. Now remind uh, everybody what that one is. It's the you can play on any player's control, maximum per player, uh, one cost, uh, basic upgrade. And as a hero response, after you change form, you can discard this card to ready your hero. Yeah, it feels real good. Is that an aggression card? No, it's basic. Oh, even better. So it's kind of like it's kind of like a adrenaline rush or civic, but it's for reading, and so it allows you to basically, you know, put it in play whenever, and then when you want to trigger it, like you can. Now are we playing with those cards next week <laughs> when we play Ant Man and Wasp or no? I mean, I can't. I I don't. I wasn't playing on you. Oh, okay, because they're not in Marvel Champions or Hall of Heroes or no Marvel Champions DB. They're not in there. Yeah, I don't think. Okay, they are. yeah, so so they wouldn't be easy to build into our decks. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's need, need to just get more of that stuff. Like, I, I think we're always going to continue to like not necessarily like all the time, but we're sort of the prep cards. I think we're going to get more stuff that flushes out these kind of archetypes. Oh yeah, a no, bit trust me. The more prep cards um, that come out, the happier I am because that makes Widow even better. Right, but th- this isn't a prep card. But I'm yeah. just saying, like prep cards are an archetype yep. right and i think this form flipping thing will be as well we'll probably get more heroes that relate to it uh i think the Have other ever done a prep card signature card deck type though that wasn't widow Go ahead. uh that'd be interesting right like i've definitely played them but i think it's hard to do one because there just aren't enough of them like like widow brings all of her prep cards right right to the table so you can get a prep card type build but like if you look at any aspect there's only two right different ones generally and then you get the two in basic which is the like uh target acquired which we love and then the other one um the one that when it surges you can draw two cards yeah. which um it's fine but it doesn't feel great because it costs two right um, it cost itself and one to 
draw. Right, but it's fine in Widow, right? Oh yeah, no, it's great in Widow. Right. I'm I'm not saying in Widow it's bad. I'm saying in most other decks it's not great. Because yeah, you'd rather so, just not um, ever see Surge. <laughs> yeah, like so. No, I haven't seen I haven't seen stuff. But I definitely use prep cards in plenty of decks, especially Rapid Response Leadership One that allow, that costs two and allows you to put the ally back into play when it's been right. defeated and just give it a damage. Like that's a great card. And it's only, I think, well, do they, I have to read the card. I don't know if they leave play, but I was thinking like, if you have, if they leave, I think they do leave play. Cause you get to trigger Maria Hill more than once. Yeah. So, um, so that would be great for like the, I think in war machines would be a bunch of allies that will have, I don't know about, but there are going to be more allies that have enter play effects. Yeah. Or just make that. Well, yeah, that's, that's better. in most, card games that's becomes an yeah. archetype or mechanic and when they leave play they'll probably i mean i don't think we've had any we certainly had bad guys that did stuff when they leave play but there's not many allies that have stuff when they leave play but i bet that'll be something that they throw in at some point as well uh but dan says yeah. it sounds pretty good in mid to late game quicksilver deck too with the uh when you switch forms you get to ready yourself because obviously whenever he can ready, he can ready that resource card of his, which just becomes real good anytime you can unready. So maybe be able to heal himself, switch to hero form, and then ready again. Um, that that might be yeah. a kind of fun oh, thing. Always feels bad in Quicksilver when you have to exhaust on Alter Ego side. Like that obligation for him, I feel like it hurts so yes. much. Well, because as you've pointed out, he's pretty slow, and any turn he can't do all his stuff feels real, real bad. Well, it just shuts down like so much of his kit, right? Like if you're exhausted, you can't even use his build, right. like his main ability. So. Well, uh, uh, but luckily he has so many ways to ready exactly. himself. Exactly, but like still, but he it still feels he bad. also um, gets really hurt by retaliate. You know, anytime he's got to attack. I mean, I guess Iron Man does too. But anybody with a lot of little attacks. Does Iron Man though? Like besides the gauntlets, like you still get like repulsor blast. Well, sure. <laughs> you know, like or like super rock like punch that. Yeah, where Quicksilver has real, nothing so. like that. He just literally punches himself to death with retaliate. <laughs> like two damage. Yeah, you, you're gonna you, you're gonna you should run you should run a a Modok with a Quicksilver deck. Yeah, no, no, no. That retaliate. I mean that that's one of those situations they talked about that's just not fun to play, right? <laughs> like, although if we want to challenge ourselves, there you go. Modok against uh, Quicksilver. Uh, so do you... Uh, you? You could probably you could probably do it with, like Yarn Bjorn and stuff. Like you, you have ways to sneak damage. Yeah, in, but Yarn Bjorn's once, right? It... Yarn Bjorn. Oh, you can do it on every yeah, attack. Yarn if Bjorn's you got a once. enough fist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every attack, exactly. So like, if if there's other minions and stuff, like I, I or or you attack the villain, right? Like you just attack the villain and then kill Modok. Like you don't even need minions. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, anyways, uh, probably the other card in her pre-con that I think is really interesting and we're talking about is, uh, and they mentioned this in the Q and A a little bit, um, is these uh, team team cards, right? Um, yes. Uh, you know, I think the the Mighty Avengers. So the Mighty Avengers is the only team card that uh, that we know of, um, and it's three cost support. You get to play it under any player's control, which is interesting. So you don't even have to be an Avenger, and you could play this under someone else's kit who is an Avenger. Uh, max one team card per player. Uh, if each of your characters has the Avenger trait, each ally you control gets plus one Thor and plus one attack. So I don't think it's like particularly interesting card necessarily. I mean, but it's it, pretty ridiculous know. though. All your Avengers get plus one plus one. I mean, as if Avengers weren't good enough already. But <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous, I think. Uh, and is it Avengers trait? Yeah, I, 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 I. I... Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's really good now, but I think it's going to have pretty drastic effects, like, in the future. Like, I don't... I think there's going to be a lot more allies that... I think we're going to see stuff that shift away from Avengers. I mean, right? I hope and, like, so. That, like, that's my... That's the thing that frustrates me. Now, when I was looking through building a leadership deck... Actually, it wasn't leadership. It was uh, my protection deck. I was like, oh, maybe I'll just throw in a bunch of ally stuff or uh, Avenger stuff. And... Not every I, I think the thing is Avengers are a lot in leadership. And and aggression. and aggression. So not But outside of that, there actually aren't a lot. Yeah, right. So everybody I was looking at, I was like, oh, that's not an Avenger, that's not an Avenger. So it'd be interesting but they keep building up the Avengers, right? And I feel like they're already good. 
So to add more stuff to build them up is kind of frustrating. I wish they would focus on something else. They've done, obviously, a lot for Guardians in the last um, few sets. But the Guardian, the Guardian, but it just makes sense. The Avengers are such a big group. Like, who wasn't an Avenger, I feel like, in some cases. <laughs> sure. But the... Uh, in the comics um, and the Guardians were definitely much smaller uh, as like a team but, but I just wish you know, they like... did some things to buff them up because I think the in general now a lot of them are neutral and maybe that's part of the reason why but in general I feel like they're not as strong as the Avengers right now a lot of the Guardian allies and I'd rather see buffs that buff them up and make them better rather than keep buffing up Avengers which I think are already pretty good yeah, I mean, I, I don't hate it. It's fine. Uh, I mean, it makes sense that your first team card would be an Avengers team well, card. Sure. Uh, there's just so many Avengers. And it, it, I think it just works with the current card pool. But uh, seeing what they've done with Marvel or, or with Lord of the Rings with kind of dwarves, because I think dwarves were in the same spot. And I think that's like kind of the stuff that Mike complained about when he first played, right? No, like, that was me. He made me a dumb. dwarf deck that was, oh, that was just you. ridiculous. And it just wasn't fun to play. Yeah, and I think Avengers are kind of like that right now to some degree. Um, and... I, I I have no doubt that you know like you know X Men are going to be coming eventually. Sure. Uh, I feel like you don't don't want to say the X word on when you talk about Marvel because <laughs> then everyone asks you when it comes out. But you know like uh, you know there's there's going to be a lot of other stuff that comes out, and so uh, the team card for Avengers I think is not particularly interesting. I'm excited and interested to see what they do with other team cards. Sure. But I uh, I'm totally on board with like this as a concept like. I think it's the thing people wanted, right? Like, give me a benefit for playing this faction or this like kind of thing. It's like kind of like Sylvans or whatever and and Lord of the Rings or whatever and kind of any other sure. game. It's just like the slivers in in magic, right? Like give me the buff. All right, well we've been talking for an um, hour now, Terrence. Let's uh we got one more hero or do we want to save him? I guess maybe we'll save him for next week. We can talk about Adam Warlock next time. Um So, but yeah, this was good. This was good. It was a good discussion. It was good. Um, it was good. It was a good game tonight. I definitely want to take this combo on again next week with a uh, something that we've prepared a little more for it, right? So Ant Man and Wasp, we got it locked in. Yep. Uh, I mean, I already built my Wasp deck. If you want to take a look. Okay. At it. Well, um, we'll do that. Yeah, we'll do that uh, for sure off camera. Um, but yeah, no, send it to me and, uh, I'll check it out and I will, uh, I will definitely put together an Ant-Man aggression deck to, uh, hopefully complement it well. And, uh, I'll take care of the minions while you take care of the schemes. Right. And then, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do a little bit cross function as we need to, which we know it could swing heavy one way or another. So, you know, we got to be prepared to help the other person, but, uh, but no, it'll be good. Yeah. Just put three target acquires in. That's what I've learned, actually. <laughs> well, this to, one... I need to find room for three. This one, I don't know that... I mean, there wasn't... This This is the one... The, all the minions, they have those, like, stupid boosts that are, like, take a damage, draw two more boost cards. Well, the draw two, two more, more boost, boost cards, cards. Is, a, is a really bad one. But I don't think the take a damage and draw another boost card is that bad. I mean... Eh. I, I... It's, it's kind of like Surge, right? It's just, like... Here's this crappy card effect and I'm replacing myself. Well, sure. Sure. And the other one's just like, here's a crappy card effect and then take two more cards. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, that, that one's just take two more cards. But yeah, so it replaces itself and adds one. It's like that stupid advance or whatever. Under siege. Or, yeah, under siege, not advance. Uh, yeah, that one's just annoying. Yeah, it's exactly that one, except it's like, oh. I mean, it changes the math, right? Because you know you're safe yeah. now if you're yeah and it's especially brutal with claw i feel like when you're ready to yes too. i don't disagree with any of that cool all right um, everybody well thanks for joining us tonight definitely go check out um the two playthroughs i had today and then we'll see you next thursday yep all right bye bye everyone